we have given this opportunity to, to meet once again. So before we start with this program, may I call on the presence of Ma'am Lim. Nandiyan na ba si Ma'am Lim? To yes, yeah. prayer. Okay po. Let's pray. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you. We glorify your name. We thank you for this another day, another life that you have given us. We thank you for your greatness, for your protection, and for all the provision. Lord, before anything else, we come to you as sinners, seeking for your forgiveness for all the shortcomings in thoughts, in words, and in deeds. Cleanse us, Lord, and continue to mold us into Christ's likeness. Let the fruit of Holy Spirit be seen unto us. Lord, I live up unto you our very first meeting by a Zoom. We come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help us as we gather together. We pray for your guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We pray for all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's proceed to the singing of the national anthem. Ready na po ba tayo? Nakamute po yung iba. Pwede nyo muna i-amute para batiin natin ang isa't isa ng good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good, good, good morning po. Good morning po. Good morning po. Ayan, ito na talaga yun. Uh, Ina-adapt na natin. Danda na natin. Good morning po, ma'am. Normal. Wala yan. Ano yung video? Okay, tayo. So this morning, kasama po natin ang ating uh, BPEA, si Dr. Marmelo Abante, uh, sa, sa speaker natin for this meeting, and also uh, Sir uh, Rihan uh, Tadeo para po sa uh, marami pong mga information or mga uh, knowledge na impact na sa, sa nila sa atin the new normal so yung mga magtatanong pwede po tayong mag-message sa chat box may chat box po tayo diyan makita niyo pa yung chat box ng ano napapansin niyo po so kung mamaya habang may naririnig po tayo na uh, sa mga speakers natin pwede po nating itanong diyan sa chat box para po masasagot po nila tayo no um, kailangan na natin embrace ngayon yung bago nating um, buhay. Ito na yung magiging bagong buhay natin. So, nakakalungkot na hindi natin in-expect lahat to na mangyayari sa mga buhay natin. Pero kailangan natin mag-move on, kailangan natin uh, i-work out kung ano yung kaya natin magawa upang malampasan natin yung mga pagsubok na ito. Sama-sama natin ipag-pray sama na sama natin um, hawak kamay tayong um, gawin ang best natin para pagtagumpayan ang pagsubok na to sa 
sa buhay natin, lalo na rin sa mga estudyante natin, sa mga teachers, at para sa kwilahan natin. Kaya maraming salamat sa 38 na participants na andito ngayon. We are hoping na madagdagan pa tayo para mas maliwanagan po tayo sa mga bagay na pwede natin ma-apply sa darating na pasukan. Kaya welcome po natin ngayon ang ating first speaker, si Sir Tadeo. Palapakan naman po natin. Sir Tadeo, come in. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me once again. Uh, I hope uh, uh, this will be a fruitful day. And as mentioned by Ma'am, uh, this is the new normal. So, ready na ba talaga tayo sa ating tinatawag na new normal this coming school year? And I believe that partially we did it for the past remaining of the semester. Okay? So, my... I'll be discussing, uh, I was assigned to discuss the RTL, also called the Remote Teaching and Learning, the Models and Concepts. And then afterwards, we will have some checklist, our readiness for this particular model of teaching and learning. So I can now present my screen. Kita na po yung screen? Yes po, yes, yes. Kita na po. Yes po. Bakit pa nasa salamat siya agad ako? Sanay ako. End na ka agad? Oo nga. Mukha activity na ka agad. Hahaha. So my topic is remote teaching and learning model and concept as well as the readiness of the institution for, for this remote teaching and learning. Actually, as I mentioned a while ago, this remote teaching and learning was not a new to, uh, to us because uh, we already experienced how to conduct classes and how to evaluate our students remotely uh, outside of our institutions. But there will be a so-called as emergency remote teaching and learning for the past uh, remaining of our semester. Why emergency remote teaching and learning? Because we didn't plan for it. It's an emergency. It means there is a uh, automatic disruption of classes and we need to continue our, to conduct our uh, teaching and even learning and even assessment of our students. So that's why the Commission Higher Education, um, before the, uh, when the pandemic uh, and we, when the government canceled all the classes, what we did is simply to create our alter alternatives mode of teaching to continue the classes. There is a modular type, synchronous model. But still, we need to through what remaining, uh, what lack or meaning of our uh, remaining of, of the, remaining of the semester rather. So our objective now is simply to describe the different remote teaching and learning models that can be implemented in Asia Tech. Okay, so select also the best option that appropriate delivering the instructions and suit for the institution in this particular. It's Asia Tech. College. Now, if you notice, there is already a, a communication from the Commission on Higher Education. What type?
Na wala ba? Audio, wala audio. Wala audio. Nawala si Sir Rican. Kinukonta ko, wala. Hindi pa nag-ano. Pero naka-join siya eh. Uh-huh. Hello po. Yun. Hindi po ba ako? Nawala. Na-disconnect. Na-disconnect ako. Ano na? Uh, allow to share daw. Paki ano naman, please. You cannot start skin share while other participants sharing. Ah, may nag-share. So, pag may naka-share po, hindi pwede mag-share yung iba. Wait lang po, ha? Kaya po nawala. Sir, okay na po. Wala na po naka-share. Wala okay. lang naka-share. Ano po? Okay, nakita na ulit. Sige, sir. Kita, sir. Okay, so balik. <laughs> so that's part of the new normal. <laughs> uh, so describe, uh, and also we will assess the institutional readiness in shifting to this type of learning model or the remote teaching and learning. So... Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Lower your hand. So our current situation as education system that assumes the physical presence of teachers and students in the same space at the same time automatically excludes from students and can respond easily to circumstances that force closure, whether this is due to pandemic, conflict, floods, fires, or some of other disasters. So this is based on the Commonwealth of Learning of the UNESCO that organizations that um, that many areas of our country, not only our country, but it's a world uh, situations that many places were put in lockdown. Many were caught unprepared. So the, our education sector, particularly in the Philippines, as no one or probably most of the institutions were uh, was not was not prepared for this particular unprecedented learning crisis that needs to be addressed immediately. So the COVID nineteen pandemic resulted in over ninety percent of the populations affected by closing schools because of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's according also to the Commonwealth of Learning. So what, what do you mean by remote teaching and learning? So remote teaching and learning is umbrella term, actually it's an umbrella term for all the teaching and learning that takes place remote outside of the traditional classroom settings. So basically, as a, as a as, uh, share a while ago, that this is already an old terminology because we are already practicing it and embedding it to our previous classes. If you notice that we are giving 
uh, electronic handouts. We are doing also an online quizzes. Partially, we are doing it as part of the remote teaching and learning because we want also to finish the course, the course content of our uh, the content of our courses. So, what are the different types? So, first type of the remote teaching learning is the home-based approach. If you notice, there is so called as a homeschooling program. So, homeschooling program is alternative learning. And if you don't want to enroll your student, your child to a school, it's a homeschooling approach is appropriate. But because of the pandemic, there is already so called as part of this this um, model is the home-based approach, which provides an opportunity for students to experience an alternative form of teaching and learning with the use of technology. But if you notice, this home-based approach or homeschooling is the use of the technology. But the main problem of the, of the home-based approach is how about if there is a, a limited access to technology? So that will be the resolutions of my, uh, my succeeding presentations. So lesson packages are prepared by teachers and then uploaded online for the students to access from home. So it simply says that we need to prepare our lectures ahead of time so that we can give it or mail it to the students for them to uh, upload also or download it and even upload all their activities. Second, what are the home-based approach tips? It can be used plain text instead of attachment when emailing. Now, if you notice, if there are a lot of images that can be uh, sent through email to our students, there will be a difficulty for them to download, particularly if they have a connectivity issues or uh, lesser access to internet connections. And probably through this home-based approach, the teachers can host also accessible video sessions, but that requires attendance. So meron kasi tinatawag tayong synchronous and asynchronous. So probably by means of the synchronous, you can inform them that you have to meet online by 8 a.m. the morning, but it doesn't require attendance. Now, the next, the next thing is you have to upload your video session so that those students who are not present during the session can review also your uh, discussions. And this is the most, the best thing in Hobie's approach is simply provide hard copies or some sort is you have to provide them USB that contains all the resources that needed for, the, for uh, learning. So, if you know, video conference calls can be effective tool, but they require a lot of data. So, ang problema nga natin is not all our students has an easy access on connectivity. So, some are having a problem, some, some only using a mobile data or share, sharing it on or using a hotspot. So, and also they have only a limited uh, bandwidth for a certain period of time. Second, this is not this is a familiar thing with you all. It's an online learning. Online learning involves the use of um, tools of learning with the key elements being uh, being used um, of the internet to receive and exchange information. So, if you notice, sir, what's the difference between a blended uh, a home based approach that uses also an internet? Remember, there will be only a minimal uh, interventions or or access to a connectivity. Kumbaga, there will be, sa, sa home base kasi, it's basically, it's a self-paced learning. But if there are uh, some, some, uh, some uh, parents also hide teachers or, or um, tutors for the students. Kasi sa home base approach is particularly in a grade school, grade schooling, it's a uh, teachers uh, and parents' responsibilities. Kung baga sa pagdating sa bahay, yun magulang ang nagiging, pang, nagiging guro. Okay? So sa online teaching or online learning or digital learning, it involves the use of online tools for learning with the key elements being the use of internet to receive and exchange information. So typically, it involves on an interaction between the teachers and students through online classes and platforms. So, Sa school daw, sa, di ba sa school, it also resorts to our virtual classes to keep education moving forward as primary form of online learning. 
So there are different forms of online learning which where all the confusion tends to be originate. San ba nanggaling ang online learning? Kasi sabi nga natin, online learning is just simply a receiving and education remotely. So that's how only define the online learning. So kapag daw nag-aaral ako outside of classrooms and I'm using or accessing an internet, it defined already that I am on an online learning. Okay? So there are, as I mentioned, there are different types. So we will discuss this and how we will connect this online learning with different types of remote teaching and learning. So that's the main root or the online learning. Second, uh, the third one is the distance learning. So distance learning is considered synonyms with an online learning because this is a distance learning varies very slightly. So while often considered synonyms with online learning, uh, distance learning is typically part of a formal education institution, whereas online learning can involve non-formal education institutions as well. As well, even non-formal education institutions, but include online tutoring platforms and professional skills development courses. If you uh, check the different lines, di ba meron mati na tao na teachers online, di ba? Classes online. So that's it's a form already of teachers of the distance learning. It simply says that a teacher uh, discuss things or cl his classes remotely, and of course, students are also on the different places. And that's what you call a distance learning. So distance learning is also similar to online and remote learning, as you still rely on the online tools such as discussion boards, video calls, learning management systems, of these institutions that provides the course or courses. Distance learning also is a form of an online learning, but the two are not synonyms. So the school provides online education through virtual classes that offers online courses are also example of a distance learning. So here in the Philippines, there is already a um, CMO order for a distance learning, but in this case, this is what you call a transnational uh, program, so TNP. So we will discuss this later. So the third one is distance learning as part of the remote teaching and learning. So my online, my distance. Then we have also so-called as the e-learning. E-learning naman daw is referred to the interaction that occurs between a teacher and student. Sir, ano ba ang difference? Sabi mo kanina yung mismo online, ganun pa rin naman. There is already intervention between a teacher and students. But for the inner learning like, like others, so it's often used interchangeably with an online learning. So kati din natin, napagpapalit-palit din natin, ano ba yung e-learning sa, sa online or even on a distance learning. But remember, these two things are still different. So e-learning refers to the interaction that of course between the teacher and a student. Under this method, a student learn lessons through an online medium even if the teacher is in the same building as them, which helps to simulate work-based learning situations. A good example of an e-learning is students may be present in a physical classroom, but the teacher may use an online training module to teach a particular model. So that's how it talks with e-learning. So e-learning has become more widely used by many schools. So though less of them still struggle with the implementation. So basically, we are using um, electronic materials for us to deliver our uh, topic or our courses. And that's referred also to an e-learning approach. Next is the virtual exchange. Actually, this is the last dapat, but uh, since I heard a lot of things as blended learning, that's why I will be uh, shifting my, my slide from this to the another. So when we say virtual learning, it's a virtual exchange rather, it's a method of remote learning combined with student exchange programs. So basically, if a student wants to earn his degree outside of our country, Antaldon is a virtual exchange. So basically, it's still a remote teaching and learning, pero you are earning your degrees from outside. So that's why there is already a combination of a student exchange program. So virtual exchange involves the use of technology also for connecting students and education institutions in different parts of the world. So most virtual exchange programs are international and typically focus on a college level education. So if you notice this virtual exchange uh, is basically for 
if we have to compare it with our uh, educational system, this is also connected with a transnational programs of the Commission on the Higher Education. So same thing as, as the previous uh, models. So learning takes place through online platforms, uh, virtual exchange programs, methods are online, and these are also form of, form of a distance learning. It form of remote learning, physical and time distance between students and their instructor, or some call it as facilitator. So this is the much uh, appropriate term for what we are doing now. It's a blended learning. So blended learning is a combination of trust traditional learning in a physical classroom and digital learning using online tools and platform. So if we have considered as our residence classes or in uh, or the face-to-face or a classroom settings plus an online, in the middle of that, that's what you call a blended learning. So parang lumalabas, it's a classroom plus online is equivalent to blended. It means it's a mixture of a typical face-to-face -face and all your online materials, okay? So again, it's a combination of traditional learning in a physical classroom and digital learning using online tools and platforms. So students normally have a fixed schedule of attending part of their classes on campus while completing the remaining parts through virtual learning methods. So they do assignments and coursework online and attend some classes virtually. So if we are talking about blended learning, still, meron pa rin tayong tinatawag na face-to-face. -face. Hindi siya lahat nakalagay sa, sa learning management system natin or any platform, but still, there will be a combination of a face-to-face. -face. Now, if you check on my figure, that the, blend, the blended learning is look like blender. So it means you are combining your, the face-to-face uh, the online, the only connected le uh, learnings, the online learnings, your computers, and there are a lot of applications that can be implemented or can be blend in the terms of learning. Okay. So students involved in blended learning also have a fixed schedule to receive live online lessons. So sabi nga natin, it's in particularly in a video conferencing, there will be a so-called asynchronous and asynchronous uh, model. So when we say synchronous, it simply says that you have a same time of delivering it. Kung wari ang klase mo ay 8 to 9 a.m. Therefore, if you call for a, a, a live discussion, so you have to meet also from 8 to 9. Then for those who are not, uh, for those who fail to attend that particular live classes, you need, uh, teachers should also upload that kind of, that the recorded discussion for other students can be recall or review your discussions. So yun yung tawag natin asynchronous. Na, asynchronous. So synchronous, it means sabay-sabay kayo. And asynchronous naman, ibig sabihin, it's based on the time um, uh, time uh, preferred of the student. So this blended learning is beneficial for students who wish to pursue a college course particularly those who are uh, working students while juggling other things like work and professional training courses. Kasi, di ba kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong mga estudyante na, na parang hangin lang sa loob ng classes. Pero kapag naman nasa virtual world, active na active. So probably, kasi nga sabi nga natin, sa blended learning daw, um, di ba kapag sa klase natin, nakikita natin ang mga estudyante natin, we are doing on the middle. Bakit? Kasi nakikita natin, mer it's a, our students is a com are combined. Merong mga fast learning and even merong mga slow learners. So ang gagawin natin is simply go on the middle for them to catch up with our discussions. Kasi hindi natin pwedeng sumabay tayo sa mabilis kasi mapag masyadong mapag-iwanan yung mga mababagal. Or sabayan natin yung mabagal, ang mangyari naman is maiinit naman yung, mag yung mga fast learner. So we'll always put on uh, uh, put ourselves on the middle and still we pray always for the best. Diba? Ganun lagi na, sa, na dapat lahat happy sinasabi natin. Pero sabi nga natin, uh, the, virtual, the blended learning is appropriate for, for this kind of situations. 
So if you notice that the distance learning, blended learning, virtual learning, and e-learning are comprises of an online learning. So whether you are using distance learning, blended learning, virtual learning, e-learning, still these things are still anchored with an online learning. Because everything, these types of remote teaching and learning involves an internet connection and can also include a virtual face-to-face -face interactions like webinars, online lecture, virtual meeting, the use of online tools um, for learning such as online curriculum, virtual space or conferencing softwares could be considered as a mix of virtual learnings and blended learning. So if you notice, there are, there are differences between online and a face-to-face -face course. So the first difference is the predominantly asynchronous. Why asynchronous? Because unlike the face-to-face -face counterparts of a campus and online courses, it is asynchronous where the students and even faculty determine when they will engage and participate in the online courses. Diba? So sometimes if you have only to post discussion board, so ang bahala na, uh, you have all the set deadlines until when the students can answer your discussion boards. Can, diba? So that's how predominantly asynchronous. Second, different discipline is a must. So discipline, a successful online learners must be motivated, disciplined, self-directed, and have a good at time management. So students in face-to-face -face courses must actively listen and participate in class, take good notes, study and complete coursework. Diba? Ganun din ang magnagawa natin during the face-to-face. -face. Showing up to class goes long way to successful completion. But in an online environment, without an instructor standing before you telling you exactly everything, you need to know to pass the next test. Or simply upcoming writing assignments, successful online learners must also be motivated, disciplined, self-directed, good time at, at ma time management. So, yung time management kasi ng ng, ng uh, face to face kasi kailangan nila pumasok sa klase mo di ba so and also they need also to submit and submit uh, pass all your course requirement same thing naman then on on an online online so they need also to submit deadlines they need also to pass all your requirements so still the still discipline must is a must in an online and also it's on it's a uh Kaya lang, ano ba ang difference between discipline ng online and discipline ng face-to-face? -face? Kasi sa online, talagang you have a discipline to, to listen, di ba? to participate. Ganun din naman. Kaya lang, nga sabi nga natin, sa, ang discipline natin sa online courses should be based on our time preference. Di ba? Kung nang 8 o'clock na umaga sa, sa, klase, ng, sa klase natin sa face-to-face, hindi ka pa ganun ka-active, hindi pa ganun gumagana ng utak mo. Pero yung 8 p.m. pala, eh, very active ka, still you can have also a discipline as long you comply with all the requirements provided or um, set by your instructor. Third is the, it requires also diverse communication. Bakit diverse communication? Because uh, diverse communication skills is a paramount on an online learning. So there are a lot of learning exercises and course materials that involves different types of or diverse communication skills because of our re reading, written content, uh, consume video and audio content, interact with others in a variety of communication styles. That's a new learn content. So to see how new con concepts are applied to understand your assignment descriptions, to get feedback on your performance. So if so the head, there are a lot of things that you have to communicate now differently in terms of the face-to-face, -face, in terms of the online. So face-to-face, -face it's simply a teacher's instruct, diba? Some sort of only as uh, providing communications or providing instructions, whether it's written or verbal. But for online, kasi, there are a lot of methods na. So, even your submission, even your project can be submitted online. Uh, there are a lot, diba? Pwedeng it can be a, in terms of video presentations, it can be on the written presentation. Kumbaga, the communications of the students are, are 
uh, improve on an online. So, ganun din. Uh, Di ba sabi natin sa, on, sa face-to-face, nahirapan tayo. Sometimes we notice that uh, students submit, submit uh, submitted to us a, a copy-paste to the internet resources. Ngayon, makikita rin natin on that particular case because there are a lot of tools that can be checked uh, in terms of plagiarisms or copy-paste technology. Hindi ang tawag natin eh. Sa, sa IT kasi yung tawag namin eh. O, mga IT, naka ano naman kayo, uh, CPT. So, your assignments are based on the CPT. Ano pa CPT? It's a copy-paste technology. You just simply uh, search and that's the answer. Copy, copy paste. Then, then sometimes, if you notice, ilan yung nagsasabit ng pare-parehas. Ano nalang binabago nila? They are only changing the font size and even the name. Then afterwards, tapos. And if you notice, some, some students still submitted um, papers with hyperlinks, di ba? <laughs> Kung na-observe ninyo, may hyperlinks pa. So, kaya nga sabi, sa, 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 sa online, diverse communication skills are paramount. Okay? So, marami na kasing counterparts on that. That involves also already lecture, dialogue-based learnings, exercises, and also it's an advantage of having diversely communicate, communicated course content that students may read, view, and even review. So the fourth is the nonverbal, nonverbal, nonverbal correspondence. Sorry, nonverbal correspondence. So students depend even more on on feedback facility. Um, even more on facilitations, assignment clarifications, and feedback provided by their instructor. So in a face-to-face, -face, student can plan or get information and feedback about learning and performance whether they attend class or not. So in asynchronous online courses without the, the live uh, in-person class component, students depend even more on the facilitation, assignment, and clarifications. So as I mentioned, feedback should be provided also by the instructor. So, ah, forgot. It's a feedback sa mas palayon. So for nonverbal correspondence, it's majority of our communication from student to, student to instructor and student to student involves nonverbal asynchronous correspondence. Kasi nga sa online, they are already doing it as um, posting of this of questions and probably afterwards masasagot mo yon di ba hindi kasi naman uh, lah all the time online si student or even online si teacher so that's why it calls a nonverbal correspondence because sometimes if there is, there will be a time for a student to post his or her questions and during that time na hindi naman present si teacher at kapag nagkaroon lang siya ng chances or yung schedule niya, doon lang niya masasagot yung mismo increase of the students. So that's why it's also important to management to identify what time that the teacher will be online. Okay? So that's that's a verbal, a non-verbal correspondence. So, well, it's different from face-to-face -face course which also involves more in-person dialogue and conversation. Is an advantage of an online course is that you can generally communicate more ideas as well as clear. Kasi nga, if you want to explore it by even uh, by recorded video or even through text, kasi diba, some of our students are based on the readings and some of them is based on the listening or watching. watching. And next is Netiquette. So this is the most the, uh, important also on online. So the netiquette. So digital literacy and netiquette is a must for an online. So digital literacy uh, for, instru for instructors and for students, uh, we do not need to be a proficient at pro computer programming. Kasi yun ang nagiging fear, lalo na kapag hindi ka IT or hindi ka in, uh, uh, aligned to information technology or hindi ka techie. Yung sasabi nila, hindi, lalo na yung mga not too, not too young uh, teachers na talagang sinasabi nila uh, hindi maganda ang online kasi maganda pa rin yung face-to-face. -face. Pero if you notice whether you are not proficient at computer programming, languages, writing code to teach online course, but you, do, you just simply need to be comfortable working with a learning management system and basic computing programs such as email, uh, 
different types of applications such as Google Apps and publishing software such as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and so on and so forth. This becomes you as as well as you're comfortable with helping students troubleshoot missing technical uh, difficulties. So netiquette links are uh, links to be an external site can be also a important on on an online learning. So to ensure that you are able to communicate and build relationships with others in a productive manner without face-to-face -face interaction while you, do, you don't have to be a computer wizard, okay? You should have a positive attitude, that's simply a positive attitude and an open mind about learning new things and interact with others in the digital world. Kumbaga, it's still, it's, uh, sinasabi natin na, kasi sometimes we are only convenient, di ba? We are, uh, sometimes we are, simply convenient in front of the students facing. Kasi kapag nga sa mga online daw, hindi natin alam kung ano yung ginagawa ng mga estudyante natin. Some sort, minsan, iba, uh, lalo na kapag hindi naka-live naka yung video, di ba? Hindi naka-on naka, naka yung video. So we really don't know what students are doing. The same thing with a face-to-face, -face, di ba? Kahit nga naka, nakaharap sa atin ng estudyante, Sometimes hindi natin alam. Kapag hawak nila yung phone, hindi natin alam kung ano ginagawa nila. So same thing. Kaya nga sabi natin, netiquette, because it's an ethics, di ba? Kumbaga, but since we are doing ethics over the internet, that's why we call it an etiquette. So, so it's, it, it's a must and it's very important for you to be able to succeed on an online platform. So second, uh, next is the individualized learning. Individualized, individualized learning is a, is a discussions on the online environment may offer more opportunity for students to think about some sort of research and even drop their discussion posts and responses. So rich and complex student-driven class discussions may be facilitated in both environment, but with distinctly different advantage and disadvantages. Because if you are using asynchronous and sometimes you offer, offer longer period of time, even number of days, discussion in the online environment may offer more opportunity for students to think about. Diba? If you're talking about discussions during a face-to-face, saglit lang siya. Kasi remember kapag sinasabi natin face-to-face, meron tayong a lot of time to discuss this thing. Kapag, kapag kasi sa, sa uh, online, we can post this discussion topic even for one week period. So, ibig sabihin, our students are giving enough time to think on it. Diba? Kasi ako ang experience namin when I enrolled in the UPOU or ano. So, meron dong is requirement for as long you have to discuss things. Kasi sabi natin, comprehensive and, and um, there will be a good indica indicator for you to be able to, to pass on that particular requirement. So, meron kang pinibigyan ng teacher mo na, ah, this will be a two-week time. So, ibig sabihin, ikaw, as a student, meron kang dalawang linggo para pag-isip ka mabuti yung mismong tanong o sagot dun sa, 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 sa discussion ninyo sa klase. So, ganun din. Makikita mo rin yung mismong sagot ng mga kaklase mo. Pero, sabi nga natin, there should be always an etiquette, di ba? So, hindi mo naman pwedeng kopyahin lang, copy and paste kasi, if your teacher is really strict, makikita at makita niya o mga observe niya that you are copying, copied it only from your colleagues. Di ba? So, kaya tinatawag natin na it's an individualized learning on an online platform. Sorry. Online courses are often more personal and individualized. With synchronous meeting times and place for the whole class, like in face-to-face -face courses, the student engagement in learning in an online course may feel or even actually be more personal and individualized than in a face-to-face -face setting. In online courses, teacher-led lectures and in-class exercises are replaced with student-directed learning options that are universally designed for all learners. So generally, instructors interact with students more frequently on an individualized and a personal basis, facilitating the learning of each student throughout the course and the student to student interactions are generally more abundant. So mas marami kasi yung, yung mismo time for them to discuss it online. Unlike in a in a face to face, na yun nga lang talaga that we are only limited or bound up for time period. Kasi for eight to nine AM, do you think how, what how many topics can be discussed, can be 
responded to your inquiries. Probably for a certain questions, we can only ask one or two students to respond on that. But for an online platform, uh, all or even majority can respond to your questions. Next is bring together diverse people, cultures, communities, and students. So it's diversity. So comprised of students lagging in from all over the regions, online courses may tap into endless possibilities. Imagine from bringing together diverse people, cultures, communities, and cities that expand our learning opportunities based on our unique experience and perspective outside of our physical location. So, iba-iba. Kumbaya, nasang kaman, ano man yung mismong culture culture mo, kung saan, uh, diba? I, I really don't know if here, uh, either in the Asia Tech, if you are only purely a Santa Rosan student. So probably you are also uh, have a lot of different types of students, diba? So, kaya nga sabi nga, uh, kumbaga, the diversity already answers the rest, diba? Meron kang individual learning based on, based on the perceptions or based on the learning abilities of your students. So we can help this, okay? So multi-dimension content and learning exercises. So when every aspect of learning engagement in a class take place on the online environment, it is very easy to infuse lots of multi-dimensional content and learning exercises throughout the course, including numerous technology and based learning opportunities. This is different from the traditional face-to-face, -face, which may rely more heavily on traditional lecture style, deliberate content, and classroom-based learning exercises. So, in a, in a, in a, a di ba kapag sinabi natin face-to-face, -face, ibig sabihin, nandun lang tayo yung mismo traditional that the teacher discusses, sometimes we are doing reports there, ganun din naman. Um, sa face-to-face, -face, sa, sa online, meron na tayong, marami na tayong way of how to deliver our content and even our teaching methodologies, diba? And then yung mga reading materials natin online, we have also a video to, uh, to be, or movie to be required to, be, to watch and even a lot of things can be used, okay? So, and for online, success in the online environment requires active and frequent participation from everyone. So, hindi lang ibig sabihin that you are, the teacher should be only post questions uh, once lang in the entire semester. Diba? Hindi yun. So, it's look like that you are chatting. Diba? Sa, kapag nakipag-chat ka, diba? Kapag nag-chat, nagsimula ka mangmusta sa, sa friend mo, sa grupo nyo, sunod-sunod na yun, napakahaba. Ganon din gagawin natin sa, sa online. So, therefore, there will be a lot of inquiries or a lot of uh, questions that can be put all together on an online platform. So for instructors, writing lesson plan is replaced with preparing instructors' presence plans and facilitating learning for students as they each work through the course. For students naman, showing up for class is replaced with scheduling their time to work through an online exercise of the, of the course and interact with their classmates. So online are not harder and don't require more time, but the way you engage with them is, okay? So, ganun din. Kung baga, uh, ang engagement kasi ng teachers sa, sa online should be more than a face-to-face. -face. Kasi nga, uh, we are also doing it as based on individualized and based on also on the time preference of the students. Sa ano daw, sa online, sa face-to-face, -face, di ba? Kung baga, uh, we are doing a instructor led or a a lecture based lecture based sa ano sa online you look like a stage performer so class session in face to face courses are a lot like on stage performance bakit stage performance kumbaga sa ano sa face to face nanonood sila ng live uh ng live play pero sa video kasi they are also look uh, a watching a tv or watching a movie. So, if you notice, you can already create your script or a dress rehearsal practice and prepare, preparing your lectures. So, a performance that classes, the class session itself. And if you were not there to witness it, you missed the opportunity entirely. In online courses, instructors are not on the stage, diba? 
but instructional content can be written and rewritten or recorded and re-recorded -reco -re over and over again until it's become effective in meetings if intended instructional goal. So students can read, can read and re-read and, re -read and even watch and rewatch again and again. So, kumbaga saan lang, sa face-to-face, -face, kapag hindi mo na, hindi ka nakate ng klase, sorry ka na lang. So, mag either magtanong ka sa klase mo kung ano ang na-discuss. Kung nakapag-lecture siya, magpapapotocopy ka. But for an online, hindi na kasi ganun ang magiging method natin. So, sabi nga, it can be asynchronous or even asynchronous. So, ganun din. You can uh, create your own script as a teacher. You can practice it. You can record it. You can upload it. Or if, probably if you're doing it on a live discussion, so you have to record it also, upload it so that the students can also watch, rewatch for them to recall what they miss. So same thing with the students who fail to, to uh, witness your live discussion so they can still watch and rewatch the uploaded video. So last instructor's role is focused on facilitating students' effort to think, critically apply, and make sense of new knowledge. So in both settings, either in an online and a face-to-face, -face, so the instructor, the role instructor is to teach. So though teaching in the online environment looks different from teaching it on face-to-face, -face, all of the information in the world in the students' fingertips, diba? Sabi nga, isang, isang pindot mo lang, nandiyan na yung mga resources. So they can literally open up a new tab and just simply Google the answer. Diba? Sometimes our students, itanong mo kay paring Google. So yan yung kanilang ka partner for, uh, for learning. Teaching online becomes less about teaching information and more about facilitating students' efforts to think, critically apply, and make sense of a new knowledge. So blended learning is a way of teach that combines, as I mentioned, as a combined of an online resources with in-person instruction, with in-person instructions to create more personalized learning environment. So moving online content, students move at own pace also. Can familiar, uh, the familiar can move faster while unfamiliar can also make, uh, can pause, diba? rewatch and read other resources for them to catch up. And also, um, engagement when, are most alert on an online. And for those who have disabilities, yung medyo ano, then they can already take some breaks when needed. Hindi yung tuloy-tuloy. Unlike kapag sa klase, di ba, kapag bored ka na, wala ka na mag magagawa. Kasi you have only to, to sit at still or remain on your, uh, on the class. Di ba? Kaya sometimes, kung mapapansin natin, even on a face-to-face, -face, kahit hindi naman magsi-CR, magpapaalam yung Isudyante sa'yo, sir or ma'am, restroom lang po. Pero in reality, gusto niya na, mag, na mag-break. Bakit? Siguro pagod na siya or probably uh, nainit na siya. But on, a, on an online, they can do it without asking permission on you. Diba? So as I mentioned, this is not new to us because in 2016, using the CMO 62, there's already policy standards and guidelines for transnational education programs, or we call it a TNE. So in this TNE, it's already introduced the so-called blended learning and even distance education. So here it's defined as a blended learning is a mode, it's a mode of education delivery that combines distance education, include online with traditional classroom based. So distance education naman is a mode of educational delivery where by teacher and learner are geographically separated instructor is delivered through materials and methods using communication technologies and supported by organization and administrative structures. Administrative structures and arrangements. The delivery medium is typically online but can be by print-based modules or by mobile phone. So, ano nga ba yung mga involvement on a blended learning? So, sa blended learning, so as I mentioned a while ago, that the courses that can be integrated online with a face-to-face -face activities. 
So hindi naman sinabing blended lang, it's purely online. As, as we discussed a while ago, that a blended learning is a combination of a face-to-face -face, face -face and an online. So it's a combination, it's in between of the classroom settings and on the online approach. Courses that are taught both in the classroom or face-to-face -face at a distance. So pwede naman kasi tinatawag na virtual face-to-face. So, mixing or combining instructional technology with an actual job task in order to create a harmonious effects of learning and working. And also, it's like combining computers with traditional teaching. It also referred to as reverse teaching, flip teaching, backward classroom, or reverse instructions. So, Kung tingnan natin yung image, the picture says that's a brick and mortar. So this is our traditional instructions with the use of a technology -rich instructions. So sometimes you are using PowerPoint for you to be able to discuss it and present your courses to your students. And this is the online learning. It can be an informal online learning or even a full-time online learning. Okay? So if we combine now your traditional and, uh, traditional and an online approach it becomes now your blended learning now there are different types of blended learning so it can be a rotation model flex model a la carte model or even an enriched mo virtual model so i think if there are uh, basic education teachers here rotation models are uh, are familiar with you Okay. So, definitions of a blended learning, again, is a formal education program in which a student learns at least in part through online learning with some element of student control, over time, place, path, and, and or pace. At least in part is a supervised brick and mortar location away from home. And the modalities along each student's learning path within a course or subjects are connected to provide an integrated learning experience. So, how we will differentiate now these types of learning, learning or blended learning? So, isa -isa natin. So, first we have the rotation learning muna. Ano ba yung tinatawag natin na rotation learning? Rotation learning is a model of a blended learning that involves the traditional face-to-face -face learning with an online learning. So in this time, uh, the schedule is divided and fixed between the two processes or it runs the teacher's discretion for a given course. So meaning to say, there will be a time for face-to-face -face, and there's also a time for online learning. So as I mentioned a while ago, there are four types of rotations learning. So the first type is the station rotation model. If you notice, the, uh, your students are being grouped into three, right? So the, let's consider your class is 9 to 10.30 a.m. So therefore, you have to divide your class into three groups in which the first group on 9 to 9.30 is on the online and on group two naman is on the face-to-face -face, and on group three is on more on the collaborative. So that's how the station rotation model works. Then on the 9.30, there will be change of rotations or there will be change of uh, stations. Kaya tao na station rotation model. Now, if you notice that on the station rotation model, this particular uh, stations can be found only within classroom. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa rin lalabas ang sadyante sa loob ng classroom. So, you just simply divide your classroom on three phases or three stations for the students now to undergo this model. So allow students to rotate through stations on a fixed schedule where at least one of the stations is an online learning station. This model is most commonly in the elementary because teachers are already familiar with rotating centers and stations. So basically, this station rotation model is look like the same as lab rotation model. So sa lab rotation model, Similar to station rotation, it works by allowing our students to rotate through stations on a fixed schedule in a dedicated computer laboratory or
flexible schedule arrangement with students of existing computer laboratories. Afterwards, students who and station uh, station rotation, the station rotation, the three stations are depend on you. There will be they are located only a on single classroom. But for lab rotation, for sure, there will be a dedicated laboratory. So after the direct instructions, they have to go to the laboratory for their online and individualized uh, learning. So it's characterized by the use of school computer laboratories in a new ways. So laboratory stage, laboratory rotations are also taking lots of different forms. But the, in the basic idea, it's similar across, di ba? So as I mentioned, yeah, yung, yung estudyante natin are undergo on a different, on a traditional classroom. Then afterwards, maglo-rotate sila sa, sa laboratory. So kung meron kang... Kung wari, meron kang tat-apat na klase, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11 is still the laboratory schedule. So, may, meron pa rin schedule. Kung maga, it's a combination. Kung maga, sa ano kasi, dun sa station, station rotation, very minimal lang kasi yung computer sa classroom. Unlike on the laboratory, it simply says it's fully equipped so that the number of students can be accommodated by the number of computer machines. So next is the PIP classroom. Sa PIP classroom naman, baliktad na ang nagawa. So you have to start first with your online instruction and content. So this is a pedagogical approach in which direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the individual learning space and the resulting group space is transformed into dynamic, interactive learning environment where the educator guides students as they apply concept and gauge creative in the subject matter. And that's based on the Flip Learning Network as uh, research of the 2014. So baliktad naman, inuuna mo mula ng bigay yung mismo mga online instructions and content from ano. Then afterwards, sa classroom naman, it simply exists as a practice and projects lang. So what they learn from from the online instructions. So, baliktad. Kung baga sa dat dati, ang ginagawa natin, nagbibigay tayo ng discussion, then afterwards, we validate kung natuto ba sila. So, dito naman, hindi. Magbibigay tayo ng mga online instruction and even content, our online resources. Then, sa face-to-face -face naman, we will validate what they learn by reading your instruction or even the materials provided. So, the, that's how it works. And next on the rotation is so-called as the individual rotation. So if you notice on, this, on, on the illustration, there's still an online instruction content and there will be an individual rotation. So individual rotation can be an intervention, it can be a direct instruction, it can be a practice and, and a project. So it allows students to rotate through stations but on individual schedule. If you notice, the difference between the individual, individual rotations from, this, from the station rotation, kung baga sa, sa rotation, may groups, may groups sila sa station. For individual, depende yon. Kung kailangan niya magkaroon ng direct instructions, individualized, or probably you can assign it to other, uh, 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 you can regroup him to another students for practice and projects, or probably you can act it or again, as an individual tutor or so-called as intervention. So lumalabas, individual rotation is an individualized forms of learning. So next is what you call the flex learning. Yung flex learning I combinations to ng intervention, ng discussion, kumbaga sa flex daw, kumbaga flexible yung mismong um, way of teaching and learning, okay? So, in which all of these things now are can be done, kumbaga sabi nga, it's a way of uh, lalo na the, the, the flexible blended learning can be used for working students. Kasi nga, it's based on the flexibility of the time schedules. So, that's how the flex blended learning.
So sabi nga, it's a customized one space, place, and mode of learning with pace, for example, so that may take accelerated programs or engage in a part-time learning to ensure that have time to work on the site and learning can take place in a variety of settings, including the classroom, the home via the internet, and while commuting or part of the work study program. So if kahit nagbabiyahe ka, you can still do your uh, uh, assignments and tasks. Yung a la carte model, di ba? Parang, ang a la carte model parang ano lang eh. Uh, parang it's, a min, it's menu lang na mamimili ka, di ba? So, it's, it's uh, ang dating tawag dito is a self-blend model. It's a program in which the student take one or more courses entirely online with an online teacher of record. At that same time, continue to have a face-to-face -face or a so-called as a brick and mortar educational experiences. So students may take an online course either in a, in a resident campus or an off-site. So this is different from a full-time online learning and the, the next one I'll be discussing, the enriched virtual model because it, it's not the whole school experience. So still, it's, there is a combination of an off of a online and offline it can be at school or it can be in your workplace so that's what, that's how it works an offline okay so kasi it's, it's still a, it's, it's still a blended because meron kang tinat you can uh, do online anywhere and as long there is always a presence of online trainer okay so you can do online activities at home you can do like do online activities even everywhere and also there is what you call an offline learning. So the offline learning can be done at even your workplace without, without the intervention or without the presence of an online trainer. Or it can be done also on your school. The, in, the enriched virtual blended learning naman is, um, is a whole school experience in which each course, example is programming, Students divide their time between attending classes and learning remotely using online delivery content of instruction. Kumbaga, it's always a combinations na ng tinatawag nating online instruction content and a face-to-face -face supplementation. So, pwedeng magbigay ka lang mga supplemental learnings, mga reading materials, mga resources. Then afterwards, you can validate it on a face-to-face -face supplementations. Kumbaga, i-discuss mo rin or some sort as clarifications on what they learn from your online instruction and even content during the face-to-face -face uh, face -face meetings. So kaya meron na tawag sa atin na enriched virtual blended learning. So basically, this is much more ap appropriate for us. Diba? Sabi nga natin na kasi... One school in Manila, here in Manila, is, will be doing this type of learning. Na parang yung kalahati, ah, kasi nga di ba sinasabi natin on the COVID-19 for us to become a COVID-19 resilient, we have to reduce the number of students. Pero in reality, hindi nila i-reduce yung class. Eh. So uh, the strategy, the class size is still 40. Let's consider the classes will be Monday, Monday Thursday, having an 8 to 9 classes in the morning. Yung 8 to 9 daw, ng Monday will be for the 20 students. And of course, the remaining 20 will be on virtual. And on another class of Thursday, it's another the, the, the new group of 20 because their online instruction were done during Monday. So, nagiging combination ngayon ng ating uh, online and even on face-to-face uh, -face for us to become uh, as solutions to our situations. So, yun tinatawag natin virtual model or to, to become a niche model. So, hinahati natin yung mismo uh, natin or, at, or our attendance in terms of the face-to-face -face and even on an online. So, if you notice that on face-to-face, -face, you, you are monitoring students' progress in real time. Diba? Kasi actual period of time eh. If you're 9 to 10, ibig sabihin, you already determine the progress of your students. Um, not, uh, natutunan ba niyo ni discuss mo or not? There can be also a person-to-person -person feedback. A student must follow content at the same pace. And there is already an immediate feedback on instruction strategies. So that's how a face-to-face -face 
point score. For blended, always remember there is a flexibility in instructional format. Bakit flexibility? Kasi kapag sa face-to-face, -face, diba, directly, it's a, it's a teacher-centered. Pero in, in flexibility, parabi ka kasing models or modules that can be used for instructions. And it, it uses technology and much appropriate if there is a one-is-to-one -one device considerations. Kasi it will be difficult also for blended learning if four students are, are um, sharing with the same resources. Diba? Mahirapan. Kasi una-una, how about their identities? So sabi niya, lag out ka muna, ako naman sasagot. Ah, sige, ako naman, then lag out ka naman, ako naman sasagot. Diba? So it's appropriated that there should be a single device for every student. And for blended learning, it's individualized and a face instruction. Okay? Now, if you have to combine this face-to-face -face blended learning, ito yung commons dalawa. dalawa. Still, you can um, assign group projects. You can also assess them to have reflect and dedicated teachers is a must for us to succeed either on a face-to-face -face and a blended learning. So, dapat dedicated yung teachers natin. So, sabi nga, teacher provides direct instruction to students face-to-face -face, while for blended learning, extended learning by course content delivered online. So, kung tignan natin, this is a Venn diagram. Diba? Sa, familiar tayo sa Venn diagram. Diba? So, this represents now or uh, represents the the commonalities and differences of a face-to-face -face and a blended learning. So, wala namang masyadong biggest differences, but remember, um, uh, instruction can shift from a face-to-face -face and a blended learning because a blended learning is now a student-centered approach. So, as I mentioned a while ago, dedicated teachers uh, instruct students towards key learning goals. Under either scenario, whether it's a face-to-face -face or a blended learning, teachers will need to accommodate diverse learners, work hard and creating a community learning experience for students, ensure that the content delivered meets students' needs. Diba? So, kailangan pa rin natin malaman o yung teacher natin na talagang naidideliver niya, ano ba talaga dapat yung maideliver at ano ba yung dapat matutunan ng uh, ng sudyante. Hindi yung pwedeng ah, basta ako na i-deliver ko na yung aking klase, bahala na ako sila ay natuto o hindi. It's their fault. Di ba? So hindi. Sana ang teachers natin can assure that the students learn from what we delivered. Now, if you heard so-called flexible learning, this is really unappropriate for us because as I mentioned, some part of our previous discussion is under the TNE. Okay? So, kaya tinawag natin flexible learning kasi it's now a method of learning where students are given freedom in how, what, when, and where they learn. So, flexible learning environments address how physical space and how time uh, physical space is used and how students are grouped during learning and how time is used without teaching. So, that's how flexible learning defines. So, if you notice that Chad pushes for flexible learning for HDI effective this August. So that's the mandate of the Commission on Higher Education, particularly our uh, Chad Chairperson, Prospera de Vera, that the correct term DAO that can be used is not the online learning, but should be a flexible learning because of the flexibility. Because if you are using the blended learning, it simply says that you have to uh, uh, search for, for instance, for this particular class, yung mismo approach mo sa blended, pare-parehas dapat. So if you are using a station rotation, the entire class will go on this particular uh, approach. So, but for a flexible learning, it's totally different. Kasi it based on the resources that the schools has, uh, the resources and cap capab capacity of the students are considered. Kaya tinawag na flexible. So whether you are enrolled in the same class, but these students has different modalities of acquiring the learning goals. So therefore, we have to implement different types of learning models. So that's why it's called a flexible learning. So totoo lang, this will be a challenge to educators, so to, so teachers. So kaya nga sa ibang school, ang ginagawa nila, they are doing it as a 
came teaching already. Na para hindi naman lahat is a burden of a single teacher. Kumbaga, there will be a task assignment to teachers that this will be your role on this particular model. Kasi flexibility. Na, for instance, in English 1, so there will be a students, uh, kung wari ang students mo ay lahat ito ay ganitong model, mag-blend ka, mag-blended ka, so ito gagamitin mo. Kung isa naman ay meron ka tinatawag na homeschooling approach or home-based approach, so merong teachers na nakatutok naman on this particular approach. But they are still enrolled on the same courses. So if you notice that check previously or uh, issued survey on flexible learning for continuity of higher education. Why CHED issued this kind of uh, survey? For them also to identify what's the status of HEI in the Philippines regarding the implementations of the flexibility or flexible learning in respective HEIs or even on the region. Okay? So, if you notice kung nakapagsagot kayo nito, kung natatandaan nyo, tinanong din ba na ano ba ang in nating grade policy at the end of our semester. Nag-mass promotion ba tayo? Still, we push through with a graded, numerical percentage, or even letter, or just simply use a pass or fail, or some sort. Kasi, uh, I don't know with Asia, uh, Asia Tech, kung ano ginawa. But for the rest, still, they are compete for graded, and some schools naman, it's, uh, Compute, uh, they have a mass promotion. So, kaya sabi nga, di ba, swerte naman noong mga hindi nagpapasok kasi pumasa pa rin sila. Di ba? Ang, ang masaklap daw, yung mga nag-drop before the pandemic, eh sorry na lang talaga kasi drop na sila. Di ba? And also, CHED also validates or verify what type of infrastructure does your institution have to support the delivery of flexibility. So may tinatanong dyan, is an online education system ba? Is a learning management system? Is a multimedia learning center, electronic library, virtual, sim virtual or uh, simulation laboratories and others? So and also, CHED also validates whether your uh, delivery or your uh, systems are licensed, open source, cloud-based, installed in local server. Bakit? Kasi for sure, if, if schools will... Uh, will purchase softwares, so probably there will be an additional cost to the students, di ba? So, sino, kanino ba i-charge yung expenses? So, so yun, yung, yun yung mga concerns ng, H, ng ating commission. So, kaya nga, in-implement talaga strictly, pinupush ng uh, natin is on the flexibility learning. Okay? Kasi, if the students don't have an internet access, so probably, we can do a home-based schooling or yung tinatawag natin home-based approach. It can be a printed or it can be a through email with a less uh, bandwidth needed or a less... Uh, uh, so again, it will be defined here that the flexible learning according to Prospero, actually if you attended the the CHED uh, region region one yata, region one or region tama, region one uh, webinar yesterday, it's June 2, um, Chat chairperson defined the flexible learning as design and delivery of program courses and learning interventions that address learners' unique needs in terms of place, pace, process, and products of learning. So, depende daw sa need ng sejante. Hindi yung mismo model of the students uh, of the of the school will be adapted by the student, but it should be the the learning intervention needs by the learner should be adapted by the institution. So it may use of the digital and non-digital technology. Meaning to say, you can use online, you can use printed materials. It covers both face-to-face -face or in-person learning and in and out of the classroom learning. So more encompassing than online learning. So a chat chairperson uh, cites some example is like use of national and community radio. But basically, the use of national and community radio is basically uh, can be used for basic education kasi sila yung mayroong mga common subjects. But for HEI, ano gagawin natin? So, purpose of communication, 8 to 9 in channel 5, di ba? May gano'n na ba? Or probably, and we need also to design our HEI to be a COVID resilient education institution.
So, flexibility can be found on the following. It can be used in your blended learning. So, as I mentioned, there are a lot of blended learning models. You can use also the computer-aided, computer-assisted learning, or yung natin CAL, or computer management learning. Or it can be used also distance education, independent learning, uh, mobile learning, multimedia learning, on-campus learning, open learning, tele-teaching, or even virtual learning. So these are types of flexibility or flexibility method that can be implemented with the use of the flexible learning. So kaya sinasabi ni Dr. De Vera na hindi tamang term yung mismong online. Kasi online is just simply included on this type of approach. So, sabi nga talaga, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there is an article that university has to firm up the flexible learning plans. So, that's why the commission also pushed different training material or uh, trainings to HEI this coming school uh, semester. And even DepEd, even DepEd, even DepEd released a learning delivery modalities for those places that under ECQ or GCQ and all at, and places that are an ECQ and GCQ. But as the best nagsabi na rin naman na there will be no face-to-face -face unless there will be a vaccine for COVID. So, yan yung anaten. But for now, sabi nga, everybody, uh, whether it's a de Department of Education or a Commission on Higher Education, it will still be using a non-face-to-face -face in, in which case on the higher education institution will be using flexible learning. So, on our current situation here in Asia Tech. Before we, uh, before we implement or before we push through with our remote teaching learning environment or flexible learning, we have to prepare the institutions for this type of model or so-called an RTL. So there will be also a remote work considerations so, at meron ba tayong guidelines in terms of attendance for for faculty in terms of uh, for non-teaching personnel. So, yun yung tawag natin mga remote work considerations. Meron bang meron bang mga ang teacher ba ay kailangan pumasok sa lo, sa school? Then, ang empleyado ba ay meron tayong tawag mga skeleton skeleton um for uh, skeleton schedules. So, meron na ba tayong mga remote work equipment. So, yung mga nasa work from home ba, meron ba silang mga equipment for them to be able to perform their work? Baka naman work from home ka, pero wala ka naman equipment. So, paano mo gagampanan yung mismong trabaho mo? Diba? So, remote work technology and institutional softwares. Is the school equipped with different softwares that can be utilized for them to work effective and efficient in, in this time of strategies or this model. So is there also an assistance or customer service that they can call for them to assist what to do? Diba? Sabi nga, dapat meron kang tinatawag na technical support na hindi ako makalag in, what will I do, and so on and so forth. So then also, after preparing your remote environment for both teaching and non-teaching, we need also to train our personnel on the use of the virtual tools. So we define it as virtual tools because there will be a lot of uh, institutional software. It can be your learning management system where students can uh, log in and submit all the activities. We have also virtual tools for uh, conferencing. So alam na ba ng bata or ng teachers how to use this, this equipment? There are a lot. So how to set your virtual workplace, okay? So, your virtual meetings, your virtual communication tools, your virtual collaborative tools. So, and also, there is a thing for now to remote, uh, to implement those remote strategies. So, once you have strengthened your technical tool skill set, you may find resources below uh, that will guide you evidence-based best practices and resources for successful remote outcomes. 
So, titignan natin, for teachers working at home and, ano, kompleto ba tayo ng materials? Nakaset up na ba yung ating tinatawag natin classroom natin sa bahay or even your workplace in your home? So, meron ka na bang desk, chair, or ergonomic position with good lighting? Ako medyo madilim pa eh. So, but this is the best positions that I have here in my place. So, you have to set up also your computers, keyboard, and mouse. And if you have a remote access to your workstation from another computer, request also assistance to your technical service. So, ano ba? Kapag daw, meron ba kayong magiging policy that if you are using a virtual communication, meron ka bang standard background? So, kung ari, ang background natin will be the logo of uh, Asia Tech. So, the rest will be the logo of Asia Tech. For us to consider it as still on a professional settings. Diba? Hindi yung magka-classic ka, kung hari magbe-virtual meeting ka, iba-iba ang inyong background. Mayroong background na kusina, mayroong background sa sala, mayroong background sa sa kwarto, o probably mayroong naka-virtual background ka na sa beach. So, iset natin na we are still on a professional setting. So, that's why we have to set different policies. Kaya nila tawag natin, complete, uh, prepared na ba yung mga policies natin on implementing this R RTL. Okay? So, meron din ba tayong mga policies that you, when you are attending meetings that you have to connect your headset and simply uh, uh, headset with a noise cancelling microphone. So, and also for teachers, particularly if you are working from home, that's, uh, that's cost another expense on your part, make sure that you have to ensure that you have a high-speed internet access. Bakit? Kasi kung magkakaroon ka ng synchronous meeting with your students or even with your colleagues, baka naman kasi paputol-putol yung mismo uh, meeting nyo na lagi ka na lang nagre-re-entry to the conversation. So dapat, it's stable and you have a high-speed internet access. So you have to establish also your secure connection. Di ba? So uh, whether you are using virtual private network and and you have already installed different tools that can be used. Like, kung ano ba gagamitin ninyo? Ah, Zoom. Kung wari, Zoom ang gagamitin natin for virtual meeting, naka-install na ba ang application for virtual meetings? Or do you know how to, how to set up your virtual meetings? And also, ano ba yung mga communication tools natin? Meron ba tayong learning management materials uh, or our online educational resources? Diba? So, ito yung sinabi ko kanina. So, these are the more checklists. So, if you have to prepare, after identifying all your uh, virtual resources or remote, resor re remote workplace, we have to identify also whether we are now ready for remote teaching. So, here are some checklists. So, we, we have to put your course materials online. Bakit? Sabi nga natin, it's a face-to-face -face plus an online approach. That's why you have to identify all your materials online. Okay, you have to establish also channels of communication with your students and even your colleagues. Establish ways to conduct your class at a distance and set up your remote access to important resources. So if you have a virtual library, so you have to, you have to uh, identify on how to access this, this resource materials. So as I mentioned, we have to put your course online. So if you have lectures, are we ready? You have to record your video presentation for your class. As I mentioned, kung yan ay synchronous, if you are hosting a live video class, you have to record it, then upload it for them to be to watch and rewatch and rewatch, diba? And you can also upload the content. So annotate or narrate lecture notes using PowerPoint. So it doesn't mean that you have only to upload PowerPoint. Probably you have also include some uh, discussions on a certain slide for them, the students can understand what your PowerPoint telling us, okay? So also, you have to provide link to online content, like including your open education resources or other, okay? And you have to familiarize how you will deliver your discussions or your courses through a virtual tool. Okay, so are we ready also for setting our activities? 
paano ba magkaroon ng activities online? So probably, for math, for math or for computer. So probably you can now provide raw material for virtual data analysis. So lalabas talaga lahat is a virtual. Okay? Post online simulation, collections, or demonstration for the stra for discussion. Probably critic and analysis are best way or best activities that can be used or can be implemented in, in this remote teaching. Okay? Provide external media files or link for virtual analysis. And also to have a student submit video or digital recording of their presentations. Kasi sabi nga natin, in a face-to-face, -face, I, I do understand we, we let our students to present or to report. So, paano natin gagamit, gagamitin yung reporting sa klase in an online? They can also submit their report on video. Actually, the students are are created, di ba? Mas gugustuhin pa nila yung kesa mag-online. Kasi kapag video ang presentation nila, pwedeng magkaroon ng ng retake, pwedeng magkaroon ng recording, di ba? Kumbaga, then afterwards they have to rewatch it, edit it so that they can do it on, uh, to have a perfect presentation. Next is are we ready for communication? How we will communicate to our students? Kung meron tayong communications through email, are we, uh, we, have to, we have to know our, the email addresses or the active email addresses of your students for us to communicate all the updates on our classes. And probably if you're using LMS, you have to post announce, announcements ahead. Okay? So, yun yun. I-identify natin what is the mean of our communication, what's, what's the medium of our communications? It can be email, it can be announcement, it can be an SMS, and so on and so forth. There are a lot. Okay? So, also, we can conduct tests and quizzes. It can, you can use also your virtual tool. There are a lot of virtual tools. If you're using LMS, is your LMS uh, has a cap capabilities of conducting examination? Okay? You, need, you can also explore online assessments such as a group projects, reflective writing, research reports, critics, simulations, scenarios, or probably they can submit their electronic portfolio. Assignment and feedback. Assignment can be done also on face-to-face, face-to-face uh, -face and also on an online. Okay, on particularly we are talking about the flexibility. Help students upload documents for grading using virtual tool. Set up also your gradebook. Help students submit video or digital recording of their project. You can use also rubrics to help grade assignments quickly and provide digital feedback on student assignments. So, ito yung ano natin, misa masaklap talaga saan natin na kapag even on face-to-face, -face, kapag gumawa ng activity ang bata, na, napakatagal para makuha yung feedback or result. So, it's better that we have to set time lang na, for instance, after three days, the students can already receive their feedback or result of their activities. For them also to understand how the teacher evaluated this, uh, their project or their activities or their task. So, kaya nga sabi niya, rubrics will be a big help now for to get assignment. Kasi, kung titignan natin, minsan sinasabi natin, ang mood natin ngayon ay magandang mood natin. Mabait ang bata na to. Matas na siya. Diba? Hindi, wag ganon. We have also to identify what type of rubrics will be using. And also, we have to inform our students in what particular time you are online, okay? So for them also to, to look forward for that. And also, the institution or probably the college, the, the, the school may provide a frequently asked questions on a virtual tool or your LMS. Para yung mga basic questions or common questions can be already answered by these frequently asked questions. Now, the next thing naman, after this readiness, kung kayo ay ready na, meron tayong, the next thing is to develop our tool. Di ba? I do understand the development of tool will be discussed by Dr. Abante. But I'll give you some tip now on how to make it very simple as possible. Okay? So there is a study in, there's study in uh, so-called as the rule of two. Okay? So keep it simple as you go. This is a remote for COVID-19. So for us to develop your learning materials, there are, they have on to set two guiding principles that you want to keep in your mind as you redesign and teach during this time. Okay? So ano ba yung, ano ba yung magiging principle natin for us to do this, uh, uh, to perform our task particular on this 
uh, crisis. And also, what are the two tools that you might use to support your teaching during this time? So, gagamit ba tayo ng uh, learning management system? Gagamit ka ba ng Zoom? And so, just simply two tools. Yun lang, kumbaga, at least you have a basic or you have identified your tools that will be used to support your uh, model. And you have also to identify two content that you want the students to know to understand by the end of this course. I do understand that, that there are learning, there are a lot of learning educational objectives. Diba? Yung learning outcomes natin. Sabi nga natin, we have to look for the most and uh, the best learning outcomes that students need to acquire. So just simply get to the best the most, kumbaga, doon tayo mag-focus. And what are the two skills or disposition that you want your students to have demonstrate by the end of this course? And also, what are the two ways that students can participate in helping you design elements of this course? So, yung online discussion ba, and so on and so forth. What are the other students, uh, what are other techniques that, you, that your students will participate online? And same thing, syempre, mas maganda, there will be a, also a two ways that you can link your coursework to current events related to COVID, di ba? So, pwede yan. Kuwari, sa statistics, pwede mong gamitin yung mismong data para makapag-analyze ka, di ba? So, and also, much better if there will be also two things you want to stress to your students about keeping themselves and other healthy during this pandemic. Kasi we need, sabi nga ni Chad, Chairman, now we want our HEI to become a COVID uh, or IT resilient. So probably we need also to remind our students how to make themselves healthy during this pandemic. So before I end, I would like to share this uh, quote from Donna Avernati that online learning is not the next big thing. It is now big thing. Because we are looking for, we are looking that online is a future pay, but it's not a future. It's already it's already now. It's now happening. It's we need only to embrace and love our uh, online learning. With that, I would like to end my discussions and thank you. Maraming pong salamat. Ayan, thank you so much, Deo, for your awesome. time. Okay. Alam ko kung ano busy kayo at maraming ano marami kayong mga ano appointments kayo yung ano para sa ni Sir ni Doc Melo mga ano kayo busy sa pag-share ng new normal na ano so, life sa so, 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 natin so we will call it as a flexible flexible mm -hmm. learning so i do understand everybody naman are ready cause everybody naman has already experience on how to use technology in their uh, teaching strategies uh, before pa yung pandemic Apo, but this okay. time nga lang, we will concentrate more on online. Kaya sabi natin is we have to identify whether our institutions are ready for this type of remote teaching learning. So, uh, I'll share lang kasi yung ibang school talaga are now setting up a center to, uh, to hold uh, or to monitor or to handle this type of uh, learning model. So, meron iba tiyatawag nilang uh, center for e-learning, uh, RTL center, so, yun yung ano, para yung mismong workload ng opisina, mag-focus lang on this kind of model. Kasi, if you notice, ganito kasi ang ano kasi ng home, particularly sa home base, mahi, medyo mabigat talaga ang home base. Kasi, uh, lalabas kasi that your online materials can be, should be printed. Kasi nga, sabi nga natin, I don't know if you are also experiencing, uh, if you have also, this type of students in your institutions, na wala talaga silang computer sa bahay. Meron po talaga, sir. Ayun. So, ang gagawin natin talaga, it will be home-based. So, probably you have to print all your materials and you have to send it to them. So, other school doing it, pinapa-LBC nila, then afterwards, talaga meron na silang schedule when to submit all activities. Then, pinatawag natin sa flexible kasi tele-teaching, sa mga tele-teaching. Kaya nga, Ang always concern of our some teachers, meron po bang magkakaroon ba ng tinatawag na internet allowance ang mga teachers? Why? Kasi there will be also an additional cost to the student, to the teachers eh, as well to the students, di ba? So, kaya yung ibang school, they are also considering to provide an internet allowance to some te to teachers that will be doing or uh, undergo on this particular 
remote teaching learning. Ayan, maray pong salamat po, sir. Kung may mga katanungan po tayo, pwede po tayo mag-chat at mamaya ay sasagutin po tayo. Ngayon po, uh, mag-ano muna tayo, water break muna tayo, water break bago po ang ating sunod na speaker. So, palakpakan naman po natin si Sir Ya. Ay, naka-unmute pa naman po. <laughs> Sorry. Sino bang may control dyan? Unmute na yan. <laughs> Marami pong salamat sa inyo. Thank you, Doc. Ayan, thank you, Doc. Ay. So, meantime, pwede po tayo mag-water break. Meron po tayo yung video, uh, Sir Ronel. Pwede po mag-water Meron tayong uniform challenge. Challenge natin yung mga kasamahan natin. Yung mga hindi pa nag-breakfast dyan, breakfast muna tayo. Oh 
ano kaya ang susunod na tatanggap nung ID challenge namin kayo to participate. Again, thank you so much, Sir Tadeo. Now, ready na po ba tayo? Nakapag-water break na po ba tayo dyan? Kape, snack. Hello? Ito na ba ako? Ayan. So, good morning once again. Ngayon, ready na po tayo para sa ating next speaker. Ito ay isang guwapong speaker na taga Asia Tech. Ang ating DPAA, Dr. Marmelo Avante. Doc? The Doc. Doc Melo? Thank you. Ayan, si Dr. Melo. Good morning once again. Uh, I think everybody are now ready to face the 2020-2021 semester. So we are all ready. We are now prepared on how to do our uh, resources, uh, kung paano yung styles na gagawin natin for teaching. But by this time, how we'll be able to make a module or a content of our lectures or laboratory for 2021-2022 facing the blended learning provided by Asia Tech. So this time, ito na siguro yung pinakamatrabaho part ng isang teacher pagdating sa <coughs> flexible learning. So I will show you my slide. I will share my slide. Nakikita na po ba? Kita po? Yes. Hello? Yes po. Yes po. Okay na? Okay. Apo. So my topic for today is uh, a continuation of Sir Regent Tadeo discussed a while ago. So it is a content development for blended learning or sabi nga natin flexible learning. Now, so, hey. So, what will be my learning objectives for this uh, <coughs> webinar? So, it is also important to wait lang. It is also important for us to make a very comprehensive learning objectives in our lesson, in our modules, either through uh, uh, yung sa bahay gagawin ng bata or uh, yung online. But more specifically, later on, uh, makikita po natin yung kaibahan kapag ano ang instruction kapag ang ating uh, audience or ating learners ay nasa bahay, walang internet connection and so on. And ano yung ibang content kapag naman naka-online or gagamit ng ating LMS na i-discuss ni Sir Dulyosa for the next days. No? So by the end of the webinar, attendees will be able to formulate learning objectives in selecting learning resources and preparing content module. So, later on, i-discuss sa inyo one by one ang importance nung bawat, ano rito? Nung bawat uh, paragraph, no? So, nung bawat sentences dito. Uh, okay, so this will be the learning objectives for this webinar. Uh, take note, ha? All of us be able to write learning objectives for a module you could able to select learning resources for your module and design learning activities for a module and write a study guide for a module. <clears throat> okay, so ang totally content ng discussion natin for this is just up to a study guide only. Pero later on, mag-share ako nung part na kung paan talaga mag-develop ng isang module. Okay? Okay, so kanina na-discuss natin ni Sir Rejan yung Toward a Better Normal in Education. So, old normal, new normal, and better normal. So, may ganung kala ka rin ba? May better pa, no? May, siguro may best pa to later on. So, let us discuss the face-to-face, -face, delivery as default, 
competency-based curriculum and disruption prone. In, in new normal, flexible learning options, of course, COVID survival curriculum and disruptions responsive. <clears throat> Actually, before, ano, when uh, COVID-19 started, no, yung last ano pa, Actually, nawalan lang naman tayo ng pasok, I think, February. Eh, no? February. So, therefore, uh, ang CHED mismo nagsabi na, okay, ano ba yung target competencies mo sa subject na yon? So, since na limited na yung time, dun ka mag-focus more. No? So, halimbawa, kung mayroon kang target na kailangan, ito talaga mapiperform ng bata right after his uh, subject. Ano? So, yun yung lang focus natin. For better normal, normal seamless learning playlist, learner-driven curriculum, and disruption proof yun naman yung ano kanina this prone responsive ang sa better normal proof na siya okay naman yung boys malakas nadidinig naman yes, po apa okay yes, sige po, okay so planning the course so what will be the step in planning our course mahalaga po yan no so in planning the course there are the components we look, uh, we work, uh, we will work on. Siyempre, uh, we will focus on writing the learning objectives per module of a course. And you will be introduced the, uh, to models of writing learning objectives and will be formulating learning objectives in the course. A course plan, of course, demonstrate our values and beliefs about higher education in general and what we believe about our rules as teachers specifically. The following steps describe alternative uh, planning decisions you can make in regard to your own course. Okay? So, ito po yung mga steps. You need to define your view of the purposes of, on education, set your course goal, select course content. So, it is very important kasi uh, since lalo na yung sa bahay talaga, di ba, ano nga tayo, flexible tayo, no? or blended learning tayo, or flexible learning tayo, so therefore, meron talaga sa bahay na hindi naman lahat ng parents at kapatid ay pwede ka talagang ma-assist. Ma ma assist di ba? So therefore, see to it na yung pipiliin mong content para dun sa bata na nasa bahay ay maintindihan niya. <coughs> Arrangement is very important. no? Para bang nag nagbibigay ka na kaagad na mga ganitong uh, statement tapos later on, magko-convert na susunod mo statement o kaya naman, nagbigay ka ng objectives, tapos biglang assessment ka agad, wala ka pa yung deliver, delivery ng subject matter, it is also important to consider the arrangement of your course content. Consider student goals and characteristics. That's why I think that uh, Asia Tech also provided a survey related on how the student could be able to adapt the new, the, ano, the new normal. No? Choose instructional modes, select reading and activities. So, importante po yun. So, Kung ang bata po ay online, nag-aaral, for example, last LMS natin, so therefore, we could able to provide naman some links ng video or sa YouTube or even mga PDF available online as additional readings and activities for the student. Again, we were not able to create our content without a syllabus. Okay, so yan, naalala ko na naman syllabus requirement. <laughs> Biglang nanahimik lahat, no? just kidding. Plan to get student feedback is very important. So, later on, I will show you some uh, important uh, details on how to be able to deal with our students. Then, seek advice from colleagues and experts. Ayun po ang importante. Again, sabi, nga, sabi natin, hindi naman tayo lahat perfectly done kung ano yung pwede natin ma-deliver sa subject matter. But if someone na kilala natin or colleagues natin na mag expertise niya yun at na-assign sa atin, Pwede naman tayo mag-ask ng question. Ano, hindi tayo magpakaano na aalam ko lahat to. Mahirap din yung ganon. Okay? Now, uh, uh, sorry. For wala. Okay. Uh, for de define your view of purposes of education. So, if it is to make the world a better place, you want to use contemporary social issues to help students learn the rules in accomplishing this goal. Uh, it is to teach students to think effectively and you'll need to plan student interaction employing the intellectual skills of observing, of course, classifying, applying, analyzing, and evaluating. If it, is, uh, if it, uh, if it demands a systematically instructional process, you'll need to specify course goal and objectives uh, clearly with the process designed to achieve them. <coughs> 
if it is provide students with the ability to earn a living as productive citizens, you'll need to include vocational knowledge and skills. Kasi halimbawa nga po kung siya ay ang field niya hindi naman nasa field ng IT, no? So technically hindi siya marunong gumamit ng LMS masyado, uh, especially sa provinces hindi naman talaga ganoon ka sabay pa sa technology. Paano ba mag-link ng video sa PowerPoint presentation? Paano ko ba i-play? Later on ipapakita ko sa inyo kung paano yung PowerPoint, i-record nyo na, tapos i-send nyo na lang sa estudyante. Mayroong ganun. Pwede natin i-record. Nabawa, i-discuss mo yung topic na to, tapos i-record mo na lang siya. Tapos i-send sa kanila. So, habang nag-replay si PowerPoint presentation, kasabay yung talk mo. So, para na rin nag-discuss yung teacher. <coughs> tapos, kung naka-online yung bata, simultaneous, habang nag-replay ka sila ng yung PowerPoint presentation, pwede kayong mag-chat sa Facebook no? or sa either another social media available. So, yun yung advantage. <coughs> if, uh, if it is provide student, uh, if it is to engage a student in personally enriching experiences, then you need to select individualized content so students will discover themselves as unique individuals and develop personal autonomy. Yun ang mahalaga, no? Again, sabi nga ni Sir Ray Jan kanina, our students have their own individual differences. Different situations. May estudyante na may, may, mayroon siyang cellphone, nakadata lang ang pwede niya lang makita yung uh, Facebook, no? Mayroon siyang computer sa bahay, pero walang internet. Mayroong batang walang cellphone, pero at wala rin computer. So, dapat natin i-consider yun. And take note, therefore, we need to create separate activities for him or for her. Kasi yun ang availability ng bata. Ay eh, gusto nating mat mat matulungan siya sa kanyang education. Uh, if it is, should help students clarify their beliefs and values to provide guidance in their lives, you must plan exercise which consider the merits of alternative values. In set, in set, uh, in set course goals, of course, the goals for, you, uh, for your course should reflect some of those identified for the department or your program. <clears throat> oh, lang naman na. Uh, pero specifically, for example, kung IT subjects at uh, uh, under, for example, ang education, tas may IT subjects, so syempre, kailangan IT related at the same time nakalink siya sa education. No? Parang if I have an activity related for, uh, uh, for alba, even I'm teaching IT subjects in education, I always see to it that my activity is based on the transaction na ginagawa ng mga eduk students. Kung halimbawa, <coughs> HRM mga estudyante ko. So therefore, kung tinutuwan ko sila, for example, ng uh, MS Office, halimbawa Microsoft Word o kaya Microsoft Excel, I always see to it that my activity is related to HRM. Papagawin ko sila sa Excel, for example, ng uh, computations, for example, paglupag-bid ng isang item. So, magkano magagasto? So, naka-Excel. Ganun dapat. Ngayon, kung Microsoft Word, paano magawa ng letter para sa tour? So, sa Microsoft Word. So, dapat ganun yung content. So, set course goals is very important. <coughs> Usually, your course can be located as a curriculum map. Curricular map for... Uh, it might be described, for example, a general education course for students with limited background in the discipline. A general education course for prospective majors and others and all uh, college students. An introductory course for prospective majors, a course in a technical career program, and advanced course for majors and a graduate program. <coughs> Okay. And of course, ask the question, how should students be different when they finish this course? Yun yung dapat natin lagi isasaisip. Is there consensus in your discipline on what should be included in such a course? <clears throat> Ito kasi yung another ano natin. Di ba meron tayong tinatawag na course outcomes, learning outcomes. Yun bang naggamit ng online learning or yung LMS natin? At saka yung nag-face-to-face -face tayo na, for example, abay, pwede na mag-face-to-face. -face. At the same time, yung talagang module at textbooks lang sa bahay, na, the same ba dapat yung output na matutunan ng bata? Pag siya ba yung nag-apply ng trabaho, yung masasagot ni LMS, masasagot din ni graduate ni, yung sa home base lang na sinasabi ni Sir Rejan kanina. So it is very important, dapat same, hindi pwede magkaiba ang magiging output. Even iba yung resources or tools na, na ginamit ng bata, dapat the same yung output. No? Number three is the select course content. <clears throat> Careful selection of content will reflect the most important topics. So, ano mga dapat natin i-consider? 
Uh, question to ask include, does your topic illustrate a method of inquiry? Indicate uh, guiding principles in your field. Teach a valuable skill among course goals. So yung mga dapat nating question <coughs> na consider sa pag-select ng course content. Dapat alam natin, ito ba method of inquiry? Ito ba guiding principles sa field nila? Ito ba ay valuable skills dun sa kanilang course goals? No? This step actually requires balance no? uh, so that uh, there is sufficient content to make the course challenging and not so much content that the pace of the course is too rushed. Live room is case a topic takes longer or other unpredictable events occur. Use student feedback again, devices to adjust coverage rate. <clears throat> Kasi kung nagbigay tayo ng module ng prelim, tapos sa, based sa ginawa nating module, hindi na adapt ng bata, kaya may feedbacking. Ano bang nangyari? Ano ba yung kulang? Ano ba yung maraming naging tanong ng bata? Ano bang maraming hindi na-accomplish ng bata? So doon tayo ngayon magre-rely. Totoo naman po, sobrang hirap na po ng face-to-face -face tayo pero mas challenging ang naka-flexible learning. Okay? <clears throat> Arranged course content is also important as I mentioned earlier. Organization of the content is extremely important in enhancing students' learning. Uh, content can be arranged in several ways. Marami naman paraan na depending nga sa facing ng ating estudyante. Relationship of classes, of course, and groups of or, or, or phenomena. Okay? Relationship of theory, of course, and application of theory or rule of the example or evidence to conclusion. <clears throat> Relationship that pro pro proceed from simplest ideas to those of more complexity and, uh, and abstractness. Yan. Sa, mga, sa mga educator, alam na alam nila yan. From uh, yung sabi natin kanina na ito yung pinakamalaking idea papunta sa hihimay-himay sa maliliit. Meron namang ibang method na malili, malili, mga sub-information tapos hanggang sa makabuo ng isang general information. Learning-based content is uh, organized by principles such as students should uh, first learn skills that are likely to be useful later in life. Students should encounter familiar ideas and simple phenomena before those that are more unfamiliar and complex. A student should understand an idea or concept before attempting to interpret and use it. And a student should encounter material geared to their readiness to learn. Of course, uh, knowledge utilization content is arranged. No? So problem-solving situation encourage students to take responsibility for developing logical and organized solution. So mahalaga yun, no? lalo sa mathematics, no? lalo sa math. Knowledge creation-based content is organized around processes of generating, discovering, verifying knowledge in the field. Uh, it shows how scholars de develop, uh, discover relationships, and draw valid inferences. Value-based content, of course, is uh, organized around issues, dilemmas, critical problems or value dimensions that help students clarify and become committed to values and beliefs. <clears throat> For consider a student goals and characteristics. Why we are uh, why are students taking your your course? Some reason maybe to develop a philosophy of life, of course. Learn to interpret numerical data. This will be their uh, uh, results, no? Understand scientific principles and concepts. Become an informed, uh, in, uh, for example, in both voter, uh, in taxes, in SSS, in accounting, and so on and so forth. And another thing is learn to communicate effectively. Of course, this is also another reason for them. Why do they enroll no, in Asia Tech? <clears throat> Pass a certification or license, uh, licensing exam. So we have BSA, no, accountancy, and uh, edu. No? Uh, they, they are eyeing forward, of course, to pass the licensure examination for their field. Learn to solve complex problems for engineering, uh, IT, ComSci, IS, and so on. <clears throat> Learn to organize ideas is also important and understand how researchers gain knowledge. So, yun yung mga reason behind why do they enroll. Okay? They also may be uh, there to get a better job or meet social expectations. No? The match between your goals and those of your students is important and try asking students 
what their goal be, uh, what their goal are. Uh, share your goals and explain why they are important, what background have your students had, and what external pressures are they working, and the answer help guide your pace. Uh, diba? <clears throat> Malalaman natin yon kapag ano ba talagang gusto ng bata sa subject ko? Ano ba ang learning na ini-expect niya? So para malaman ko, may consider ko yung goals ng bata doon sa content. Para pa doon sa mga example, mga personal examples at sa mga napapanood natin na uh, sa mga YouTube related doon sa mga courses na ino-offer natin or program na ino-offer natin. <clears throat> Choose instructional modes. No? Uh, use both active and passive. Kasi nga, models of instruction. Lecture is the most common passive mode. Take note. While active modes include discussion, uh, case studies, laboratories, clinics, and build of experiences. Okay. While uh, research about teaching and learning shows that the students learn more competent, more quickly, and retain what they have learned longer if they are actively engaged. Uh, a combination of two modes actually open works well naman. So better, hindi lang puro uh, lecture o basa-basa, basa-basa. So dapat mayroong interaction. So, sabi, nga, sabi ko nga kanina, a combination of two modes opens work well. Select readings and activities is also important. Again, textbook can be used as an organizing source no? which integrates the course uh, content. Tell the students how you expect them to use the text in their learning <clears throat> and what is useful about it. So, kailangan alam ng bata kung bakit ko ba ito binabasa? Bakit ko ba ito gagamitin? Bakit ko ba kailangan ipokus ito? And do not, ito ang nangyayari ito eh, no? Common to Dahil author ako, no? Na-experience ko yan. May mga mag-chat-chat talaga, may mag-e-email na, eto naman po, parang ganito, ganito, ganito. So, do not criticize it or the author. Huwag gawin yon. This isn't constructive and it can under undermine learning. <clears throat> Kasi minsan kapag may libro tayo na pinapagamit sa bata at may content na mali, tayo as teachers na sabi na ay kasi ganito, ay kasi ganito. Hindi ganun dapat yung approach. Pwede mo sabihin na maybe there are certain things in his mind do sa author na gusto niya ma-develop sa'yo kung bakit niya binibigyan ng error, especially kung programming. Mali mo, gusto niya ma-determine na ah, nag-debug pala to. Kaya nilalagyan natin ng error. Pero kung steps kong mga clinical yan at sa ka-health hindi pwedeng may mali, alam naman natin yon Or else, mamamatay or makakapatay tayo ng tao. Mahalaga yon If discrepancy occurs between your views and text, explain the rival interpretation exists and give reasons of your choice. You can encourage realization that clear truths are not always agreed upon. Do not clarify or do clarify for students which ideas are acceptable for examination. <clears throat> so kung conflicting yun nasa libro sa sinasabi ninyo, kailangan maklear nyo yun sa bata. Okay? Paano ang gagawin natin? If textbook are not used, you'll need to help students organize and integrate knowledge in the course. So pwedeng mga monographs kung ginagamit pa natin yan, no? And articles. <clears throat> ako sa project management, ang hilig kong magpabasa ng articles, then magbibigay ako sila ng mga Ah, uh, gagawa nila statement of work, gagawa nila ng uh, work breakdown structure, and so on and so forth. Uh, provide depth of information, demonstrate research processes. Kasi minsan ang bata, pag tinag sa Google, kay paring Google, kung ano lumabas yun na. So hindi nila talaga nakikita kung yun ba ay fit doon sa hinihingi natin. Provide a variety of pers perspective is also important and provide up to date ideas. No? So kung may latest may ano ngayon na ito dati pero ito na ngayon. So sabihin niyo pa rin yung dati, ito yung ngayon, ito yung possible next time. Okay? So mahalaga 'yun sa bata. A combination might be useful also. <clears throat> in uh, in writing a syllabus or construct a syllabus, the syllabus formally of course alam ko naman na alam na ng bawat isa yan kasi how many years tayo nagtuturo. The syllabus formally communicates your expectation. Dapat nandun yung grading procedures, assignments, activity, and so on. The following elements are often included. Ano yan? Mahalaga po, lalo ngayon, yung inyong pangalan at yung inyong contact information, especially dun sa <clears throat> mga nasa bahay lang. Para kung hindi nila maintindihan yung inyong module, 
pwede silang mag-text sa inyo tapos kayo magkasabi sa kanya kung kailan kayo magre-reply or kailan siya pwedeng mag-text para inform kung ano hindi niya matidal sa module. Course number, section and title, and meeting schedule. <clears throat> so kung siya ay magpipay, ah, kalbawa siya sa bahay, tapos every two weeks or every three weeks, mag-meet kayo somewhere in her barangay, ka, uh, mismo sa barangay ano ng kanilang uh, location, no? pwedeng ganon. Description of the course is also important along with course goals or objectives and learning objectives. Required materials is also important, text and supply. Then is space for names and telephone numbers of at least two classmates para dun sa kung sino pwede niyang kakolaborate pagdating sa mga activities. Na? Sino mas maka, mabilis niya makokontakt kapag may mga activities. Class schedule with topic and reading sequence. Due dates for assignments and dates and times of exam. Mamaya mapagtahan kayo ng sample niyan. <clears throat> Plan to get student feedback. So I, I don't forget I don't forget din po pala policy regarding ano, participation and academic integrity. Importante. Grading standards and criteria including late work policy. Dapat nakalagay doon sa syllabus. <clears throat> Number three is plan to get student feedback. The following indicators can help collect information for revision. So dapat sa uh, student feedback, may quizzes, may exams tayo. <clears throat> Observe student faces and body language kapag face-to-face yun. Pwede natin gawin. Monitor participation and attendance kapag online tayo. No? Yung mga naka-LMS. Monitor frequency of out-of-class discussion or use of office hours. So, uh, yun. Monitor assignment completion. Dapat na monitor natin. <clears throat> Nagbibigay tayo sa kanila, uh, it is also important for us to give them a, uh, a, reman, a reminder na okay, class, you just only three days to comply with my first activity or second activity. It's also important. Parang sa, ano, sa bill ng kuryente at saka sa bill ng globe, no? automatic itinetext ka na available na yun. Ganon din tayo as teacher. Diba? <coughs> Dapat binibigyan din natin sila ng reminder lagi. Matrabaho, ay ganun talaga, teacher pinasok natin eh, di ba? Okay, analyze student papers or journals, monitor uh, assignment, of course, uh, monitor, ask students directly. Hindi yung, <coughs> hindi mo makontak, no? Sasabihin mo na lang sa bata o kaya sa chat group, hindi siya naka-online nung araw na yun, sa kaklasi mo tatanong, anong nagawa na ni Marmilo? Nakagawa na ba yun? Hindi ganun. So, PM him or PM her, tapos saka na lang, ano, kung naka-asynchronous siya at that time, eh di, pag nagbukas siya, makikita niya yung in chat. Hindi yung kung kanil-kanil mo sasabihin. The best time to make your own notes about needed changes is after each class session. So, <clears throat> mahalaga yun. Seek advice from colleagues and experts. So, mahalaga din po ito talaga. Colleagues from the field can provide useful ideas for planning your course on topics such as instructional modes, test construction, and student feedback. So, kung bakit ako lagi nangungulit ng inyong OBE syllabus, ng inyong test construction na yan, pabalik-balik sa mga din and program head, na sabi siguro ng mga din na iirita na at saka ng head, your discipline may have teaching journals which have useful ideas. Kung kayo naman po, sa balagtat, nagtuturo kayo ng business, no? <clears throat> may kaibigan kayo na sa industry, okay? HRM ka, nagtuturo ka ng about sa uh, pag, uh, for example, pag-create ng tour. So, Try to communicate with your friend na mayroong mga tour ano, di ba? So, para ma-share mo yun sa class. Mahalaga po yan. Okay? <clears throat> now, planning the course, you will find that in this course, all module have the same components. So, sa, sa pag nagpa ng course, kanina sinabi na natin yan. Ito ang pinakamahalaga. Introduction, objectives, content, activities, and references. This will be the main focus. Because, uh, course planning, okay, refers to uh, planning courses of instruction. It serves as a guide for the teacher as well as, for example, for the students in creating condu conductive atmosphere for worthwhile learning and for post-school activities. <clears throat> then, this will be the gag agagnes, no? Principle. Akala ko nga gagnes, eh. It's gang, gang, ganyes, ganyes. Silent key, no? <clears throat> different uh, instruction is required for different learning outcomes. Siyempre naman, di po ba? So, kung ang learning outcomes may kailangan ng hands-on or uh, laboratory activity, so iba dapat ang instruction. Kapag ang ano is pure uh, writing, so iba rin yung dapat instruction. 
Actually, Gagne's uh, principle uh, suggests that learning tasks for intellectual skills can be organized in a hierarchy according to complexity. Okay? Stimulate uh, recognition, response generation, procedure following, use of terminology, uh, discrimination, concept for information, no? rule application, and problem solving. So, depend on. The primary significance uh, of, uh, of the hierarchy is to identify prerequisites no? that should be completed to facilitate learning at each level. Prerequisites are, are identified by doing the, uh, a task analysis, no? yung sa task analysis <coughs> of a learning or training task. No? Learning hierarchies provide a basis for the sequencing of instruction. So, ito yung mga ano natin. So, events of learning operate of a learner in ways on constitute the condition learning. The specific operation that constitute instructional events are different for each different types of learning outcome. Learning hierarchies define that intellectual skills are to be learned and a sequence of instruction. <coughs> By form formulating the learning objectives per module. So, sa learning objective, ano ba yung dapat consider natin. Take note that learning objectives are written with learners in mind. Okay? What learners will be able to do. Okay? And while course goals are written from a perspective of program developers, what the course hopes to achieve. No? And some principles in formulating learning objective must be defined and discussed. Okay? <clears throat> The learning objective, of course, uh, are written in uh, learners in mind, okay, and are stated using verbs and describe the learner's expected behavior or action. So, mga akademisyan dyan, especially yung mga edu, di ba? <coughs> Take note of it, always use or uh, learning objectives are stated using verbs, no? And describe the learner's expected behavior or action. So, sino, kapag sinabi natin agad learning objectives, sino unang pumapasok sa isip natin? Na para makakatulong sa atin paggawa ng learning objectives, syempre ang Bloom's Taxonomy. O, syempre, Bloom's Taxonomy of Cognitive Learning Objectives. It includes the following hierarchical levels. Lagi naman to, ha? Pag gumagawa tayo ng objective, i-consider natin yung knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. So, yun yung kay Bloom's Taxonomy Cognitive of Learning Objectives. No? <clears throat> Read more about Bloom's Taxonomy to guide you in choosing action verbs for each cognitive level. Ideally, the learning objectives for each module should be stated with reference to the higher order thinking skill. Especially pag gawa ng exam, yung HATS dapat kinukonsider natin yan, lalo kung naka-LMS. Kasi ang bata... Kapag yan ay hindi hatch at available yan sa net, automatically sigurado tayo perfect yan. Kasi kaya mo cheating. Pag sinabi natin yung naka-hatch siya, <coughs> ibig sabihin, dinadivert natin, iniiba natin yung definition ng gusto natin hingin sa bata na same yung content. No? Same yung ano natin. Definition, iniiba lang natin. No? Pero yung pa rin ang ibig sabihin. <coughs> Importante po yun. So nakikita nyo rito, student-centered. Uh, break down the task and focus on specific cognitive process should be used action verb and should be measurable. Yan ay yung si SMART na lagi natin sinasabi. Diba? Systematic, uh, measurable, attainable, and so on and so forth. Realistic, time-bounded. Okay? Sinasabi lagi natin yan. <coughs> learning objective should be stated as learning uh, clear and as precisely as possible. Read about the ABCD of learning objectives to read your formula well stated learning objective. So, ano yung ABCD? Consider your audience, yung behavior ng iyong students or ng learner, condition ng iyong learners, and degree na gusto mo makuha ng bata right after this topic or this task. <clears throat> when we see audience, who will do the behavior? No? Pag sinabi nating behavior, what should the learner be able to do? Sa objective natin. Pag condition, under what condition do you want the learner to be able to do it? And per degree, how will must it be done? So, yun ang consideration natin. <clears throat> this will be uh, the ABCDs of writing learning objectives 
uh, during our class in University of the Philippines Open University, uh, actually this will be a video presentation from them, no? And uh, I just simply try to make it short, kaya tinanggal ko na sa video. Kasi kung video, manal pa tayo ng mga uh, 10 to 15 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes, no? The, for audience who is doing the learning, as I mentioned, syempre yung student natin, yung ating mga learners, no? So as you can see here, mayroon ako dyan na naka, uh, nagkukompute, no? Chinese nga lang. Tapos lapis, kinakain siya, ano, nasa bahay lang siya. Ito naman yung nasa library, no? nasa school, with laptops. Ito naman yung klase ng estudyante. No? So sabi nga natin, sorry, ayan. Ang students, dapat daw may indirect services, parents and family, other direct services, administrators, health services, all teachers, psychologists, and so on. So yun yung mga kailangan i-consider sa audience. Yun yung mga possible audience natin. No? Kasi kahit, alimbawa, learning management system, katulad ngayon, Kung ang inyong kamag-anak, ang iyong nanay, ang iyong kapatid, dahil sa likod mo, napapanood ko ano din discuss natin. Kaya dapat careful tayo sa pag-discuss at pag-deliver ng mga jokes, nga lalo ngayon sa learning management. <clears throat> Kasi pwedeng yung kapatid niya, siya nagbabantay sa bahay. So LMS, kalong-kalong yung kapatid niya na 5 years old, tapos nag-joke tayo ng medyo paon, so maging naingat tayo sa ating audience ngayon. Behavior, what should the learner to be able to do? So dapat alam natin yon. Then condition, under what circumstances will this behavior take place? And degree to what degree or level of proficiency is required? Pagbibigay ako na isang ng sample ng, ay, sorry ha, tinawag kong poor at saka better. Hindi ko ginawang best kasi hindi pa ako ganun ka best. So example, for example, <clears throat> halimbawa lang to ha, hindi ko sinabing nakita ko sa mga HRM. Kunyari lang to, na, na, naisip ko lang. <clears throat> halimbawa ang kanyang uh, objective, learning objective, the culinary students will learn how to bake. Yan yung kanyang learning objective. Uh, balikan natin si ABC kanina. A. Audience. Sino audience niya? Culinary students. Behavior. What does learn how to bake mean? So, kulang. Condition. What circumstances are involved? And degree. What level of proficiency is needed? Wala. Diba? So, bitin. <coughs> Ito better. Kaya na bahalang gumawa ng best. Okay? By the end of the month, culinary students will be able to make a delicious waffle tople. Tople when following the appropriate recipe, earning grade of at least, sorry, 7 out of 10 yan. 7 out of 10, for example. So, i-analyze natin sa ABC ito. Audience, culinary students, behavior, make a delicious waffle. Condition, by the end of the month, when following the appropriate recipe. Degree, earning at least 7 out of 10 points. Yan po ay 7 out of 10 points. <clears throat> so better, kaya sa kanina. Di po ba? Kasi kanina, tingnan nyo, oh, the culinary students will learn how to bake. Eto, by the end of the month, culinary students, better na to kaysa sa kanina. Pero pwede nyo pang gawa ng best yan. Okay? Another, for example, <clears throat> wait lang, wait. No. Okay. So, students will know how to use the quadratic equation formula. Kung tayo ay naka ano ngayon, kung tayo ay naka face to face, kayo papagawin ko ng better at saka best niyan. Kaya lang, uh, webinar, so kung maghihintay pa ako ng sagot nyo, <coughs> baka bukas tayo matapos. Di ba? <coughs> okay. So, what will be the audience, students, behavior? What is specifically is meant by know how to use the quadratic equation formula? Condition, what circumstances are involved? Degree, what level of understanding is needed? Kapag in-improve natin ang konti, ito yung better example. <clears throat> by the end of the term, the students will be able to calculate solutions using the quadratic equation formula when solving quadratic equation. Eh, di ba mas clear? Audience, students. Behavior, calculate solution using the quadratic equation formula. Condition, when solving quadratic equation formula. Degree, pag, with, uh, since uh, with 100% accuracy, as assumed, if not specified. So, since na hindi specified yung ating accuracy level na learning na makukuha ng bata, automatically, we assume that it is 100% accuracy. Pero huwag tayo mong naging 100%. Kung alam natin sa klase na estudyante natin, hindi kayo 100%. So, pwede mong i-define 90%, 85%. 
Hindi naman pwedeng 80, 70, dapat at least 90. 85 will do actually. <clears throat> to know how to teach with uh, another, for example, to know how to teach without lecturing. Ha? Audience, who? Sino ang audience? Behavior, what does know how to teach mean? Condition, what circumstances are involved? Degree, what level of proficiency needed? So, ito yung better example. By the end of the workshop, trainers will be able to describe eight alternative methods to lecturing that can increase in learning and transfer when planning lessons. So, audience, trainer, trainees, or tra trainees, sorry. Behavior, describe eight alternative methods to lecturing. Condition, by the end of the workshop, uh, which planning uh, lesson, degree with 100% accuracy is assumed if not specified. Okay. So, yan po yung ating uh, ABC learning objectives na, na behavior, condition, and degree. So, panagagawa ng learning objective, anong laging isipin? Si Bloom's Taxonomy at si ABCDs of learning objective. So dati, pag sinabi natin, anong iisipin ko? Ah, Bloom's Taxonomy. O dapat verb. Dapat ganito, dapat ganon. Ngayon, Bloom's Taxonomy, dahil verb ang pinapagamit. Then tapos, pag nag-click rate ako ng learning objectives, iisipin ko na sa ABCD, uh, ABCD objective, uh, learning objectives. Okay. Then, we have here... Uh, Activities is also important. In creating activities, is very important, no? <clears throat> so before the class, identify the learning objectives, plan the specific learning activities, assessment, the sequence of the lesson, create a realistic timeline. Ang dami dami pinagawa deadline mo one week. Pero pag ikaw ang gagawa, tapos mo two weeks. So hindi yun ano uh, advisable. See to it na pinapagawa sa bata ay na dry run natin. Kaya natin gawin personally ng mas uh, ito double pa natin sa bata. <clears throat> Halimbawa, yung bata, pinagawa natin, for example, ng uh, reaction about COVID-19. At least 150 words. Ganon. Pero ikaw, pag pinagawa ko, aabot ka ng 30 minutes. Sa bata, 30 minutes ang alatid mo rin. Hindi ganon. Kung 30 minutes sa'yo, pwede mong dagdaga ng at least uh, hanggang 15 minutes to 30 minutes dun sa iyong kapag dry run. Ganon din sa mga exam at saka sa mga quizzes. Okay? Bago kayo magpa-quiz, bago kayo magpa-exam, i-dry run nyo muna sarili nyo. Kung kayo ba'y mahihirapan, kung ito ba in so on and so forth. During the class, share the lesson plan with your students. Helps keep them more engaged and on track. After the class, reflect on what worked well and why. And what you would have done differently. So, mahalaga po yan. Okay. So, after going through this module, condition, the learner or the audience should be able to formulate a detailed plan delivering a course online uh, uh, the, the behavior and that integrate constructivist, constructivist learner principle, the degree. So nakita nyo ngayon, pag gumawa ako ng activity, laging ng learning objective, kahit sa activity, kailangan i-consider si A, B, C, D. Mayan ay lesson, mga activity, dapat i-consider si A, B, C, D sa mga instruction. Ito ang sample activity. Okay? Define the lecture objective for each module. Mahalaga po yan, no? You need to define. <clears throat> but, uh, of course, a learning activity, it is equal important that each activity is meaningful. Mahalaga yon. And ensure students' development and advancement through the unit. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> activities should build on previous activities and avoid being repetitive. Pinagawa mo na last time. Tapos nag-iba ka na ng topic, tapos yung pulot gagawin next time. So, hindi na pwede. Activities uh, should uh, they should enable students to engage with and uh, develop their their skill, knowledge, and understanding in different ways. When we think the student engagement in learning activities, it is open, convenient to understand engagement with an activity as being presented by good and behavior, positive feelings, and above all, study thinking. No? <clears throat> this is because a student may be behaviorally and or emotionally invested in a given activity without actually exerting the necessary mental effort to understand and master the knowledge, craft, or skills that the activity promotes. The activity objectives, no? so as you can see here, <clears throat> activity objectives are useful to help young people understand what it is they will be learning and why. 
the activity objective uh, is what the activity aims to do. For example, provide your perspective or deliver some sort of experiences or uh, for the young people you work with. Instructional tools, of course, mahalaga yan. Ayan na po yung tools natin, ang ABC Format Globes Taxonomy. <coughs> a variety of tools can be used no, in a, the classroom to support student learning, ranging from traditional to high-tech options. So, dapat meron tayong available na instructional tools. Sabi, sabi ko nga ni Sir Regan kanina, traditional and high technology options. Example ng uh, example, syempre, yung whiteboard, pwede ka namang nag, naka, yung, yung Facebook Live, no, nag-discuss nag sa mga bata, tapos kaya lang pag Facebook Live, pwede marami makapanood, no, kaya medyo nakakatakot gawin ang Facebook, Facebook Live, no. So, pwede whiteboard, pwede nag index card ako dito, pinapakita ko index card sa mga bata habang nasa bahay. Pwede poster, pwede uh, audience response system, katulad ng clicker technology, Google collaboration tools, 3D printing, and wikis. No? Marami tayong wikis. Learning resources, uh, yan, yeah, resources natin, are text, videos, software, and other materials that teachers use to assist students to meet the expectations for learning defined by your curricula. A, res a resource center is a facility within a school staffed, staffed by a specialist containing several information sources. How about the suitable teaching and learning resources? So, of course, meron tayong textbook, novels, yung iba. Ako, yung sa technical writing mo dati, pinapabasa kami lagi ng novels. Tapos ipapakwento sa teacher namin sa unahan. <coughs> Please, read your programs, multimedia, digital learning, resources. Including yung video, audio, text, text, animation, and images, and lectures. Okay? So, actually, do sa, ito po yung sa uh, open OU namin, si Rejan. Ginamit ko yung sample activity mo. So, ito yung activity, ng, uh, yun ang activity pinapagawa sa amin ng uh, UP. Binigyan kami ng sample, ano, objectives. No? Uh, pakita natin, ha? Sana ma-open natin. Ayan. Ito yung pinapagawa sa amin. So, nakita nyo, content development yung course ko sa namin ni Sir Regal sa UPOU. So, writing learning objectives, complete the table below. So, module number, learning objectives, then topics. Naka, ano na agad, after completing this module on, uh, the learner should be able to nakaready na kaagad. So, ito yung sample output namin ni Sir Regal. Ako muna, sample output ko muna. Sir Regal, buti na lang, naka-off ka na yata. So, ito yung output ko. So, ang topic ko dito kasi ay IT New Era, which is offered dyan sa lahat ng courses sa college, lalo sa new curriculum. So, as you can see here, ayan. So, uh, module 6, Introduction to Cloud Computing. After completing this module on cloud computing, learners should be able to understand, create, describe. Tapos yung topics. So, makikita nyo, cloud computing concept, tapos yung topic. Yan yung sample output ko. Kay Sir Ray dyan, <coughs> Ito yung sample output ni Sir Rejal. Ang ginawa niya, repetition structure in C language. So, after completing this module, repetition student should be able to. Yan. Tapos, repetition structure, ito yung topic niya. Okay? So, yun yung, kung tayo po ay face-to-face, -face, gagawin nyo rin sana yan. Eh, kaya lang, naka-webinar, so, ligtas na naman kayo. Pero, gagawa kayo ng buo yan para sa subject nyo. Okay? Ito po yung uh, learning objectives na paggawa namin sa mga activity sa Orange Up ng World City Colleges. So, may activity name, direction, learning objective, type of uh, assessment, uh, type of activity, assessment ba siya, sit work, homework. So, mahalaga rin yung identify lang sa bata. Ito by assessment, ito by sit work, ito by homework. Kapag assessment, anong type of questioning? True or false, multiple choice, fill in the blanks, essay. Then, mahalaga rin ilagay ang passing score, total points, total question, accumulated time. Kapag learning management system, dapat mayroon lahat na ito para masecure natin na talagang maintindihan ng estudyante natin yung ating ibinibigay na activity. <coughs> references is also important. Ano, kailangan, uh, ang references is included always per chapter, per module. <coughs> Kasi kadalasan ang ginagawa natin references, right after ng lahat, doon na sa doon references. Sa research, ginagawa natin yan. Pero sa module na gagawin natin para sa this coming SEM, 
per tap uh, per per chapter. For example, per chapter dapat nandun na kaagad si references. Okay? Then, ayan yung mga references ko dun sa nauna kanina, ang dami. Now, uh, selecting uh, learning resources. So after working on this module, you should be able to define resource-based resources, differentiate the types of web-based learning resources, open edu educational resources, or yung OER, online learning resources for each topic in your online course. Ito yung kapag online na tayo, no? yung gagamit na tayo nung uh, dinevelop ni Sir uh, Driosa na learning management system. <coughs> Resource-based learning. A key feature of the online learning model being implemented at UPOU is the use of digital learning resource found on the web. The availability of numerous multimedia educational resources on the web makes it a good tool for resource-based learning. An educational model where students are encouraged and able to use a variety of print, non-print, and human resources to seek information and solve problems. So, activity 2.1, learn more about uh, RBL from this wiki created by Campbell. Note that the wiki make use of variety of multimedia resources including image, slide, presentation, movie, and animation. It provides scan overview of RBL and how to implement it. Test your understanding of RBL by playing the Jeopardy game at the end of the overview of and the game uh, is the section titled RBL Knowledge Check Just Above um, Research. Uh, may kanina may presentation ako sa inyo mga sample na references and dun yung mga detail nun. <coughs> Type of learning resources. Okay, so si, Lo, si Laurie Lord na provides a classification of learning resources based on the type of media with each media type supporting or enabling different degrees of learner activity and engagement. Okay, so ito yung sample table ko. So, anong pwede natin gamitin yung learning resources? Okay. Number one, narrative. Sa narrative, learning task supported or mediated. Tasks where learners are expected to apprehend in assimilate information presented. The narrative medium is used to present the subject matter. Ito kapag narrative. Ano yung mga web tools and resources? Ito yung pwede natin gamitin. Kapag narrative. Web page and website, e-books, video files, PowerPoint slides, and animation. For interactive, exploratory or investigative learning task, kapag ito yung inyong task sa inyong subject matter, the interactive medium returns information based on user input. So, hypermedia, search engines, yung mga Google Scholar, video files, PowerPoint, animation. For adaptive, task involving experimentation and practice, the medium continuously adapts to user inputs. So, pwedeng virtual, okay? simulation, models, and interactive tutorial. In the last, of course, communicative. Task learning, communication between individuals and groups. For example, discussion or debate. Pwedeng gawin natin yan online. Katulad na ginagawa natin ngayon. Simultaneous may debate. Synchronous po yan. Yan yung sabay. <clears throat> Para ngayon, ginagawa natin ngayong webinar, simultaneous. Pwede kayo magtanong sa akin. On the, on the spot nyo naririnig yung aking mga sinasabi and so on. Video conferencing. Ano mga pwede natin gamitin? Using Skype. Zoom, ang gamit natin ngayon is Teamyard, Lark, Meet, GoToWebinar, Teams, BlueGis, and so on and so forth. Napakaraming free na pwedeng gamitin for video conferencing. <coughs> Instant messaging, okay, chika, ginagamit. Pero Facebook naman nandyan. Sa asynchronous, pwedeng email, pwedeng discussion board. O kaya, i-record nyo yung inyong talk, yung inyong lecture, tapos nandun lang sa LMS ninyo, pwedeng i-open ang bata kung kailan sila available makapag-internet. <coughs> Productive, Task where students articulate or express their understanding of the subject by generating or constructing the, uh, their own presentation or their knowledge or product. Siyempre, ang pwedeng gamitin natin na web tools, web and multimedia tools, word processing tools, image processing tools, audio and video capture, blogs, no? May mga blogs kasi na related sa topic natin eh. So, pwede na, na basahin nyo muna bago nyo ibigay sa estudyante. Baka mamaya niyan, hindi tumpak or sakto doon sa ating learning outcomes yung kanyang blog. So, huwag ipabasa. O kaya man, walang masyadong mapupulot yung bata. So, magsasayang pa siya ng time para magbasa ng blogs tapos wala namang kwenta. So, blogger and WordPress. Wikis, meron wiki spaces. Wiki educator, meron po. And shared write-draw system. 
Sa Google Docs naman po yan. So, sige, listen muna kayo for a while. Pakinggan nyo po yung sa existing emerging technology in uh, teaching learning from uh, UP. Mabaga lang, pero gagana yan. So sa inyo mga lecture, pwedeng ganyan. Ano? <coughs> Kung ipopost nyo sa LMS, pwedeng may link ng video na pwedeng mapanood ng bata ay na in addition sa inyong discussion. So ayaw yata, wait lang. Uh -huh. Sandali lang po ha, sandali lang. <coughs> Diyan yung mga pwedeng additional natin na ano sa mga bata, no? Input natin sa mga bata. Ayaw ah. Ayun. <coughs> Makinig muna po tayo. 11 minutes po yan para makita natin kung paano gagawin natin. Good day. In this session, we will be discussing existing and emerging technology in teaching and learning. For uh, our discussion, we will be touching on existing and emerging technologies, and then on a framework on how to pick the tool for a specific activity. For the existing and emerging technologies, I, will be, I have divided them into several categories. There are activity tools, video tools, assessment tools, gamification tools, social media tools, authoring tools, collaboration tools, and virtual worlds. The criteria I have um, used for picking these tools are that they are web-based, no need to download and no need to install, and that they are free. For the activity tools, I've divided them into several categories too. There's discussion, whiteboards, infographic tools, presentation tools, and timeline makers. For the discussion tools, I've picked um, Collaborize Classroom, where you can see you can manage discussion forums and create discussion forums. And I've also been using Google Hangouts, the chat feature of Google Hangouts for uh, discussion boards, it, because for learners who are quite used to messaging, uh, Google Hangouts has that feature where they receive their messages or uh, discussion messages and uh, like a messaging feature like a texting uh, message next is for the for other discussion tools if you have a learning management system there are usually discussion board tools included the for whiteboard tools um, whiteboards are usually used for collaboration for brainstorming so the tools I've picked for this is Tazit. As you can see, they're all just blank pages where you can write on them, whether it's handwritten or typewritten. Sketchlot is another tool. Twidla and Studo are other tools for whiteboards. The next is infographic. For infographics, you can have your students uh, create um, a summary with uh, graphics of what they've learned or um, a poster of what they've learned to just to reflect and summarize their um, the content so for these the tools I've picked are Canva PictoChart and Vengage. Vengage is really good because it tracks uh, it has analytics so it can track your the people that have viewed your infographic for presentation, we have PowerPoint, of course, and Photo Peach. Photo Peach is basically um, a slide maker for photos, and same for Kizoa, but with Kizoa, you can use uh, videos too in your presentation. 
for timeline makers, for uh, usually use timeline makers to have students uh, maybe summarize the history of um, of a topic or the history of a theory. So the tools I've used for this is history, capsules, and time glider, where you can see that there are dates uh, at the bottom for you to mark the the year or the date for the event. The next uh, category are videos, and we use videos because they are more engaging, demonstration friendly, and because of the visual cues, it facilitates thinking and problem solving. So for video tools, I pick ones where you can edit your video. And the first one is YouTube Editor and Powtoon. Powtoon can help you make uh, animated videos. And an emerging technology in video is interactive videos where you can add questions or add a discussion board within the video. So the tools that you can use to make interactive videos are Vialogs, Edpuzzle, and PlayPosit. And usually, if you're doing videos, you need to, sometimes you need to edit audio too. So there's Chairbit and Audacity for audio editing. The next category for technology tools uh, is programming. And this is becoming very popular with learners right now because um, uh, this is a skill that's quite important. And uh, I picked some websites where you can uh, take courses on programming languages. So the first one is Code Academy. The next one is Scratch, where they say from a nine-year-old to a 99-year-old can use it, and it teaches you the logic of programming. And also Khan Academy has a lot of programming uh, courses that you can sign up for. The next uh, technology tool is assessment tools. And for this, I've picked classtools.net. It's a website where you can create your own uh, assessment tools from crossword puzzles to multiple choice quizzes, or you can use existing ones from the website. There's also Quiz Revolution and Yakta Paka, which also has existing quizzes that you can just use or you can build your own. For games, I picked Kahoot for to create or to play games for your students. And also you can do badges that you can give out to your students for every achievement that they've attained. So there's onlinebadgemaker.com. And for a website where you can have your students access games, there's education.com, uh, funbrain.com, sciencebob.com, brainios.com, and the Utah Education Network website. With social media, um, this is becoming very popular too since this is something that the learners are um, using every day. So you can have them do a blog, uh, and have the, the tools for that is WordPress, Blogger, and Wix, where they can journal, write a journal for their learning or just uh, post their answers on their blogs. You can also use chat or messaging tools to uh, keep in contact with the, your learners. So there's Google Hangout. Line, Messenger, and Viber. And Facebook groups are good to use too for um, collaborating or just keeping in touch and with your students. Google Plus can be used the same way. For authoring tools where if you want to make your own modules, a self-contained module, um, these are the tools to use. There's Easy Generator, Smart Builder, and Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, for Screencast-O-Matic, this is one tool that you'll have to download and install. And this doesn't really create a, a self-contained module, but it captures your screen so that if you want to do a demo of a software, uh, you can use Screencast-O-Matic. For collaboration tools, we have video conferencing, and you can use Google Hangouts for that. And for project collaboration, 
you have Yammer, which looks a lot like uh, Facebook. So you can add your students here and they can communicate and keep their files here. Basecamp operates the same way. And then there's Google Apps for Education, where you can use Google Docs or Google Sheets to collaborate on the document. Same with Wikispaces, where you just add your students and you can collaborate on a topic. For virtual worlds, I only have one tool, and that's Second Life. And for this tool, too, uh, you have to download and install. So with all those tools that I've mentioned, how do you know which tools to use? Little John and Pegler designed a matrix based on Lorillard's conversational model based on the type of activities. And these type of activities are assimilative, adaptive, communicative, productive, and experiential. So for the first one, assimilative, this is just processing narrative media managing and structuring information. For, so for this type of activity, you can do lectures or videos or just reading text. So the technology you can use here is word processors where they can do concept mapping and brainstorming or presentation software and um, or crossword puzzles. And the next activity is adaptive and this is where a, an environment that changes according to learner input. So the technologies for this are virtual worlds where they can do simulation and games and interactive video. The next type of activity is communicative where your students can discuss whether it's asynchronous or synchronous discussions. And here you can use electronic whiteboards or discussion boards instant messaging and video conferencing. The next type of activity is productive where learners produce something. So they can create a book or a report, an essay or journal, a literature review. Um, they can compose or synthesize. So for the technologies, you can use image editing technologies, infographic tools, the timeline maker, and other project collaboration tools. The last type of activity is experiential, and these are interactive activities that focus on problem solving. So with this, your learners will be practicing and applying what they have learned. So you can do case studies or experiments and laboratory experiments in a virtual lab or interactive videos. And this ends our discussion for existing. Okay, so. Ayun, mas bigyan pa tayo ng maraming example. Ay, teka lang, baka nakamit ako. Naririg niyo po ako? Yes, sir. Hello? Okay, okay. Okay po. Okay. Okay, so we're going to give you possible learning tools. So, if you can see there are many free online na software na available para gumawa ng modules, para gumawa ng presentation, para gumawa ng mga uh, designs. <clears throat> this is also another strategy ang ginawa ko. Kasi kung ikaw ay teacher, for example, ng five subjects for, a, for the day, no? four subjects ka, tapos, uh, alimbawa, three hours na tuloy-tuloy. Kung ikaw ay magtotok na, magtotok na, magtotok, napakahirap, right? So, ang pwede natin gawin, mag-insert tayo ng video related sa ating topic. Para kahit na paano makakapahinga ng konti, habang sumasagot ka naman sa mga chat nila sa LMS natin. Parang katulad ngayon, alimbawa, <clears throat> kung may mga question habang nag-play ka ng video, Pwede sila mga mag-ask ng question, makakasagot ka doon. That is also another strategy na pwede natin gawin. Okay. So, nag-discuss na po yung Open Education Resources, yung OER natin. So, yan. Ito yung sample uh, Open Education. Ah, sorry. 
uh, go over the short study. So, magagawa tayo ng activity. What types of learning resources are used in the study unit and for what purpose? How are the learning resources de deployed within your within the unit? So, mahalaga natin i-consider yung OIR natin. In selecting learning resources per student, use teacher should keep in mind the following guidelines provided. No? So, accessibility. Again, magbibigay ka ng activity. Alam mo namang walang ganong resources ang bata sa bahay. Uh, magbibigay ka ng activity pero wala ka namang pre-nubay na mga link, mga videos para dun sa iyong mga project. Accuracy, resources are up to date. Pinakamahalaga po yun. Dapat ang activity, natin itong, dapat yung ano, available siya, up to date siya. Okay? Richness, resources reflect a variety of perspective. Uh, purposeful use of media, appropriate media is used. The usability of the resources, the resource is in enhanced and the media use. Inclusivity, the resources demonstrate social, cultural, and gender inclusivity. Para makarelate tayo dun sa ating, uh, sa binibigay sa atin na gender development ng school. Mayroong ganun, di ba? Kinukonsider yun. Now, ito yung sample activity dun sa activity-based learning. So, nakita ninyo, uh, well-guided siya ulit, objective, task, tools and, uh, tools and resources, tapos yung procedures, mahalaga yon. Dapat mapakita natin yung procedures. So, ito yung mga procedures, mahaba lang siya. At the same time, you should able to overloading students by making ganon. Then, ano yung gagamitin natin na OER? Ayan. Ito yung sample uh, activity, learning resource identification template. So, gagawin din po natin yan. So, yun. Lalagyan na natin ngayon ng learning resources. No? So, yan yung isang sample. Tapos, ito yung sample output ko sa cloud computing, sa UPOU. Okay? So, kanina, meron lang tayo na module, learning objective topics. Ngayon, may learning resources na. Okay? So, yan na po yung kailangan natin gawin. <coughs> Ito yung output ko doon sa learn, learning activity. So, dapat bawat topic natin may nakasign tayong learning resources. Mahalaga po yan. Okay? Ito yung topic ng classmate ko na hingi naman ako ng ano dyan, paalam sa UPOU. So, ayan po yung kanya, computer, uh, performing computer uh, operations. Andiyan yung kanyang learning objectives, andiyan yung topics, andiyan yung kanyang OIR na gagamitin. So nakita nyo per task, no? Per task din. Iba yung gagamitin, yung iba diyan magpapanood ng YouTube. So nakikita nyo po 'yan. Pero pag clinic 'yan dapat nakalink na agad sa YouTube. Okay? So hindi yung ano pa tayo. Yung bata, nagbigay ka ng link, pag open wala naman. So mahalaga po 'yon. Sa business, meron din sample dito na gawa ng isang business na classmate namin. So ayan yung kanyang module. Andiyan yung learning objectives, andiyan yung topics, andito yung mga resources na pwedeng gamitin. May slide share, may YouTube, no? Ito kapag LMS, may uh, may mga map template and so on and so forth, may pre uh, pre logo design.org na pwedeng puntahan in additional for your outputs, no? Para do sa iyong resources or OER. <coughs> Now, So again, this will be the references for topic number two, for module number two. We may proceed to topic number three, or module number three, designing learning activities. Ito yung medyo uh, mas challenging at mas interesting. So learning objective, assessment, and activity design. <coughs> so after working on this module, you should be able to, ayan po yung mga objective natin. So what will be the steps in designing a learning activity? You need to have a definite beginning and ending. A clear purpose and learning objective is also important. A complete and understandable objectives and directions. And a plan for assessing the objective and a mechanism for providing feedback to the students. And a description of the technology or tool being used in the exercises. Okay? And generally speaking, learning objectives or activities fall into one of three categories. <clears throat> ano yung three categories natin dyan? Meron tayong deductive, active, and collaborative. Through, through there can be considered overlap among the categories and any one learning activity may exhibit characteristic of more than one category. So ito yung didactic. No? 
A PhD deductive, some learning activities are passive, of course, and designed to present important information to students in the efficient way. So, example, include lectures, no? watching videos in demonstration, or demonstration in reading. Although traditional methods are of teaching vary by discipline, uh, these are the most traditional ways of teaching. Since it can be argued that even practicing something a student is reading, watching, or listening to engage the student, let's call this a learning activity is deducted, didactic rather than passive. They may require students to think about what is being pre presented or click a next button to go to a subsequent screen, but they don't require the student to do much more. So, andyan po yung mga sample na reading, PowerPoints, narrative, and so on and so forth. So, ano advantages? Ano yung disadvantages? May kita po natin dyan. <coughs> For uh, active, ito yung individual, no? <coughs> Uh, other learning activities uh, accord students to independently solve problems or created products. So, kapag mga IT, kapag mga business, so yan, problem solving at saka mag-create ng product, HRM. Example inclu uh, include simulation, games, problem solving exercises, and others. These activities are active learning activities since the student takes a more active role. In some cases, active learning activities are opportunities for students to practice skills and apply knowledge previously taught through deductive activities. In other cases, they are opportunities to discover or construct knowledge not previously presented. Okay? So instructors are faced with the challenges of designing activities that support learning. No? <clears throat> Napaka-challenging yan. And structuring them to work online or face-to-face. The challenge is particularly apparent when realizing that many active learning technology techniques rely heavily on significant and extended interaction. Nandiyan yung question and answer, sharing ideas, group work, and role plays. However, the hybrid or in online environment can be a favorable learning environment for students. If students working online can all have equal opportunity to participate share thoughts, and develop ideas over longer period of time, giving them the opportunity to think critically about their participation. The online environment offers certain freedom whereby students' expression are not limited by class size or by one to three hour block or limited time in which to participate. Recent development in technology also provide uh, unique tools and expand opportunities no, uh, for implementing collaborative and active learning strategies both online and face-to-face -face po yan. So, for example, online collaborations to uh, tools enable students to work in group, both synchronous, uh, synchronously or asynchronously. At the same time or at different times, ibig sabihin. While students' responsive system allow for instant pooling of students in face-to-face -face meetings to determine opinions, level of understanding, or conduct formative assessment. An active learning can also serve to accommodate different learning styles, of course, and enhance learner motivation. And as noted, uh, active learning empowers students to take primarily responsibility for their education. At the same time, it requires faculty to relinquish some control to the student, not always a bad thing, as many students will happily inform you if given half a chance. Okay? Collaborative, ito yung sample ng collaborative, group case, uh, studies uh, or projects, discussion, role-playing, cooperative. Although much active learning can take place alone, there are several benefits from allowing students to learn together. <coughs> collaborative learning is active learning that students engage in together. The ideal collaborative learning activities promotes positive independence, interdependence, which means that students cannot divide and conquer the activity, but must truly interact with each other in completing the activity. So, which type of learning is best? Sabi nga nyo, ay marami na tayong preneset. Ano ba yung best? The continuum of learning activities from deductive to collaborate is not a continuum from worse to better. There are advantages to each type of learning and a good course will include an appropriate mixed deductive, active, and collaborative learning activities. <coughs> the appropriate mix will be defined by the learning objectives of the course, 
and active learning may be better than passive learning or vice versa for accomplishing the particular activities. In general, objectives of the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy, yung knowledge and comprehensions in your lower level, maybe will serve by deductive, by deductive learning activities. Whereas, objectives at the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy needs to involve active and collaborative learning activities. And since courses should have learning objectives at various levels of Bloom's taxonomy, courses should likewise use a variety of learning activities. The following table uh, actually, as, as, uh, as presented, provides some example of learning activities that can fit into each of these three types. And some considerations for choosing one type over another for a particular learn, learning goal. Uh, the table is not all inclusive, rather it is a starting point for your thinking about how and why you might mix learning activities in your course. Keep in mind that courses should include both didactic and active and often collaborative learning activities. Okay. So a model for designing activities, uh, learn, active learning activities. So ayan po yun. Kapag passive, receiving information and idea. Kapag active learning, experience doing, observing. Kapag reflective dialogue with self at saka others. So as you design and incorporated active uh, learning into your hybrid course, hybrid ha, yung online sa sabi natin, the following model developed may be useful in conceptualizing the learning process and essential elements of active Okay, so uh, the key to implement the model to design learning activity is your kinds of learning yes, doing or observing experiences and reflective dialogue and oneself or others. <clears throat> so activity should have the following characteristics. So a defined beginning and ending of, uh, ending a clear purpose and learning objective, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, the essential components of effective active learning activities are the same whether delivered in online in learning environment or in face-to-face. -face. Dapat, ang active learning, same lang yung delivery pagdating sa online learning environment or even in face-to-face. Other components, of course, may uh, you wish to consider in your activity planning are what you need to do to prepare ahead of time, what you need to do to ensure your students are re ready to actively participate, and how you might elicit feedback from the students about their experiences. So learning tasks. So, ito na yung uh, learning tasks na ng bawat isang topic. So masyadong detalyado na tayo. So, meron tayo dito standards and habits of mind, student voice, yeah, personal goal, co-creation, teacher, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, sorry, sorry. Mali, mali ang pinot. Learning tasks are opportunities to create for students to engage with the content you're teaching. You want to be sure your, your plans and com commentaries clearly describe the learning tasks you create. In designing your learning task, ask yourself, what will students be doing during the lesson? Learning tasks play an important role in instructional settings and they may be characterized as an interface between the learners and the information offered in the learning environment. They serve to activate and control learning process in order to facilitate successful learning. They stimulate reaction, referring to learning materials, thus prompting the learners to engage intensively in the subject matter. Uh, ideally, the learners receive feedback on how will they perform on a learning task and guidance on how to acquire the relevant information. While there is general agreement on the significant role of learning tasks, there is, a, there is as yet little knowledge on how to design them appropriately. So, this is slides from Mark Child's discussion the four models of learning design. So teaching approaches, experiential learning cycle, five stages model, and supporting online interaction. 
So actually mayroon pa tong mga content. So kaya lang medyo 12:18 na may talk ako ng alauna ulit. So isi-send ko na lang yung link nito para dun sa mga possible design activities online learning. So Uh, ito yung sample procedure ulit. So, download ng template. Ito naman yung template na gagamitin. Ayaw. So, ito yung sample output na lang. Nandito naman yung template automatic. Ay, sorry. Nag-open sa, ano, sa open o yung ko. Hindi available, unavailable na. Okay, wait lang ha. Okay. Kung nangyari, ba tayo ma-open ito? So wait lang po ha. Uh -huh. Kadalian, pakita ko lang yung sample sa inyo ng sample design. By this time, may additional na naman siya as per requirements, no? Ito yung kanina, no, yung sa Mark Childs, no, and Mark Child 1 uh, and 2. So, uh... Sorry. Sorry, sorry nawawala. <clears throat> so 4.1, napakita ko na lang kayo ng sample no nung ano na tayo. Pakitahan ko lang kayo ng sample nung 3.1 para makita natin. Ito 'yun eh no. Nasa cloud computing ng 3.1. Ito yung sa web designing sample. So ito yung sample na ginawa ng classmate ko. Yan. So by this time, meron na siyang learning task. Na? So kanina, ang ginawa lang natin, module, na, title, Learning objectives, topics, open educational resources. Then by this time, my learning task na. So for example, for activity number one, read the blog of introduction to wireframe sketcher and explain the importance of using a wireframe in planning and responsive. Then activity number two, you read and watch the materials of the given link on different difference between UX and US and make a comparison between UX. So my learning task na per activity. Gagawin din po natin yun, na. Okay. So then after references ko na po ulit 'yan, proceed tayo sa Yon. This will be my last module, no? For today. So writing the study guide. Ito na yung medyo mas detailed pa. After working on this module, you should be able to explain the purpose of study guides. Uh, put together a study guide for each module of your course. So what are the study guides? So resource-based learning or RBL is much more uh, <clears throat> is much more uh, than giving students a reading list of or a list of links to in uh, online resources. The study guides are used to organize and integrate the learning resources and learning activities to provide learning scaffolds for learner to develop a deep understanding of a specific topic. Hindi pwede na puro links na lang ibinigay nyo sa bata. Okay. Topic number one, links, YouTube. Topic number two, link, ano, slide share. Topic, hindi ganun, no? Hindi ganun ang RBL, your resource-based learning. <clears throat> More specifically, study guide help students navigate through its module by providing commentary annotation, references, 
learning activities and a strategy guide for a module normally includes the following anong laman ng ating ano introduction learning objectives key concepts learning resources and study questions so yun yung mga laman learning activities uh, learning tasks that students need to accomplish to learn productive from uh, uh, from the learning resources mahalaga rin po na maturuan natin ang bata ng paggamit ng tamang referencing no proper references is very important Components comprise the body of uh, in study guide, more precisely for each topic covered by the module. A presentation and discussion of the key concept. At least one learning resource from which the students will learn this key concept. Set of study, study questions for the learning resource and learning tasks for the student to complete. <clears throat> the form of a coherent write-up consisting of sentences and paragraphs. The length of the write-up varies up according to the extent of discussion that you think you should be provided as well as your writing style remember however that the discussion serve as the purpose of annotating the topic and how this topic is covered in the learning resources on that topic that the student should study so yun mga references and so on uh, may video ulit ako pero medyo late na tayo so pag nagawa tayo ng uh, activity, again, meron tayong objective, may task, tools and requirements, tapos yung template. As much as possible, kung naka-online tayo, o kahit naman sa mga bata na naka sa bahay, nag-home learning sila, home-based learning, padalhan natin sila ng template kung saan doon na sila magsasagot. Kaya nga sa nasa bahay, pwedeng textbook, pwedeng module, pwedeng e-book. That's see to it na may mga activity attached ng doon. Ganon din sa online. Dapat may mga template tayo for professor bata para hindi ang dami-daming tanong. Okay? <clears throat> Sample output. Sana mag-open na ito ng diretso, no? Ito sa NSTP. Kung sino ba nag-handle lang NSTP. <clears throat> so, makikita ninyo study guide. Introduction muna. Okay, sa introduction, learning objectives, na? Then topic. One. Tapos historical background. Tapos as you can see, learning activity na siya. Okay? So, learning activities, learning activities, components, learning activity, study guide question is also important. Dapat, mayroon tayong study guide question sa mga bata para at early as possible, alam na nila kung ano yung mas magpo-focus sila para yung time nila hindi nasasayang, no? Then, learning resources. Mahalaga po yan. Okay? So, yan po yan. O, pakita ko naman yung output ko. Cloud computing, output ko. Ay, ito ganun. Pag sa akin, ayaw. Wait lang ulit. Nandito naman yan eh. Cloud computing 4.1. <coughs> okay. So this will be my sample output dun sa UPO yun namin. Na? Uh, ayan. So study guide, course number and title, module number and the uh, Title, instructor. So, syempre, introduction, i-introduce mo na yung subject matter mo. Tapos, learning objectives mo. Then, ta topic natin, learning, object le learning activities. So, sa learning activities, tingnan nyo, pansinin nyo ha, kung paano ginawa. <coughs> These exercises assume that you created Gmail account and installed the Chrome web browsers as directed in the previous lesson. If you have not done so already, do so before proceeding. Napaka-detail. Open the Chrome browser and navigate HTTPS, enter your Gmail address, and so on and so forth. You should be able to account my page and so on and so forth. So, very detailed siya. No? So, wala na itatanong pa ang bata. Ano yung study guide question ko? What are the benefits of cloud computing? List the steps in increasing the cloud drive. What is cloud uh, management? And so on and so forth. Tapos, ang topic number ko is Microsoft OneDrive. So, yan. Discussion, discussion. Learning activity, gano'n na naman. <clears throat> uh, dapat detail ko ang learning activity. Restore the browser window. You should be signed into the, your Google account. Click the Google Apps. If, if necessary, view the introduction information about Take Me to Drive. And get notification of your and so on and so forth. So, dapat will detailed para mas maintindihan ng bata yung inyong ipinapagawang activity. na tayo. Yun. Then right after that is yung ano natin, references. Now, I will show you kung paano ginagawa yung module. Ito naman yung topic ko sa Bicol University next week. For one week ako mag-train. So, 
Ito talaga, kanina, parang by topic lang ginagawa, by chapter. Paano ba natin gagawin yung module para sa ating uh, estudyante na talagang nasa bahay lang? Even yung nandun sa learning management. Kanina sinasabi ko, ano bang kaibahan ng nasa bahay at saka ng nasa uh, learning management system? So ito yung mga advantages. Hindi ko na masyado ano yun to. Dahil na-discuss naman natin to pero papakita ko lang yung mga sample output. No? <clears throat> na gagawin nyo rin to actually. That is also your requirements na sa inyong mga subject matter na i-handle. Kaya at advice ko si Ma'am Ma'am She, na as early as possible, mabigay na agad yung inyong mga subject na i-handle para ma-prepare nyo na yung inyong mga modules. <coughs> so, ito yung pag-adapt. Siyempre, kung i-adapt nyo yung old materials ninyo, ito yung advantages, ito yung disadvantages. Okay? So, hindi ko na isa-isahin yan. Kapag mag-adapting naman ng old materials, ito advantages, ito yung disadvantages. Ito nga pa lang training namin sa Bicol, one week to, ched funded to. No? Sa lahat ng mga ano. So ito yung course orientation. So makikita ninyo, nandiyan yung course syllabus, course overview, course study guide, uh, course study schedule, course guide. Ang gagawin nyo po sa LMS or kahit nyo sa inyong uh, ipapauwi sa bahay sa bata, dapat may course syllabus, may course overview, may course study schedule, may course guide. Paano ginagawa yan? <coughs> Ito pa para sa mga educator. No? Kasi ang um, amin titrain doon, kadalasan sa Bicol, hindi IT. So kadalasan, eh, ano namin doon, yung mga ibang program. <clears throat> sa course guide, makikita nyo, the key to successfully finish this online course lies in your hands. This module has prepared for you to learn diligently, intelligently, and independently as would be teacher. Doing this will greatly help. Kasi nga, di ba ayang tayo na tinuturoan nating uh, teacher, educator, uh, tinuturoan nating estudyante na teacher ang course, magiging educator later on. So parang sa course guide pa lang, parang binibigyan na agad natin sila ng lakas ng loob. Parang ini-encourage na natin sila. <coughs> Ayan, aside from meeting the content and performance standards of this course, in accomplishing the given activities, you will be able to learn on other invaluable learning skills which you will be very proud as uh, of as responsible learner the following guides in our house rules will help you further to be a track and to say at the end of the module tapos i did well so ganyan gagawa kayo ng ganyan schedule and manage uh, your time to read and understand every part of the module read it over and over and so ganyan ka guided ang gagawin nating course module nakikita nyo? Napaka-challenging ng trabaho na kagihintay sa atin after ng ating webinar. <clears throat> Yan po yung mga hanapin ko sa inyo right after. Actually, sa mga deans at program heads, saka sa principal naman ako hihingi niyan. So, dapat ganyan ka-guided. Tingnan nyo ha. Please note that due to the problems and er er uh, erratic internet connection and to be able to cooperate with the government of observing the ACT protocols, this online course will be delivered asynchronously. Sabihin, Pwedeng sa bahay, pwedeng mag-record ako ng video, papanoorin nila pag available na, pwedeng ibigay ko yung video sa nakabahay na naka-USB, na may computer sa bahay, and so on. Study how you can manage to do the activities of this course in consideration of your other modules from other courses. Be very conscious with the study schedule. Post in on the conspicuous place so that you can... Ganyan ka detalyado ang gagawin nating course guide. Para dun sa mga batang nasa bahay na hindi agad makakapagtanong sa atin ora mismo. Kapag online, log in to the course site at least thrice a week. If you can log in daily, do so. As a, a schedule to keep a brief of important announcement, discussion, and other class activities, check the stream. Stream kasi ang ginagamit na, gagamitin kong demonstration sa Bicol. Okay? <clears throat> do not procrastinate Remember, it is not others who will be sure change if you will not do your work on time. Before you start doing your task, read and understand the assessment tools provided. Do not settle with the low standards. Target the highest standards in doing your assignment task. I know you can. May mga ganun pa pampagana sa bata. You are free to browse and read the different materials even prior to doing the task in each unit of the module. However, you need to ensure that Yan. Yung mga continuation niyan, be polite, 
Do not plagiarize and do not patch. Follow the schedule of your course activity. Always allowed and so on. Ayan. Note that our Google Classroom is a virtual learning environment, not a social networking site. Use recent and appropriate ID photo on your profile page for proper identification. <coughs> Pag kayo po'y nagkaklase ng ganito, o nasa LMS na kayo halimbawa, gumamit kayo, for example, may ginawa link doon halimbawa, Sir Dulyosa na Google Meet o Zoom. Situate na kapag kayo gagamit doon, formal pa rin ang suot ninyo. Kasi nakikita kayo ng estudyante at nakikita kayo ng mga possible na mga kaibigan or mga magulang or mga kapatid ng inyong estudyante. Hindi yung nakasando ka, nagkaklase ka, hindi pwedeng ganoon. Lalo kapag ganito nakasum. So as much as possible, naka, ganito ka pa rin. So after nyo, nag, nag pa kami talaga. Kasi ganun dapat. <clears throat> Lastly, you are learner, hence, you do the module on your own. Your family members and friends at home will support you, but the activities must be done by you. Uh, we always need to demonstrate our core values and so on and so forth. Tapos, dun sa ano natin, may evaluation. To pass the course, you must. Na? Yun. Ito yung mga ano, ibibigay natin. Then, ayan na, ang madugo, per week na siya. Gagawa kayo ng ganito. Engage, explore, explain, and so on. So, discuss all yun. Talbawa, ang topic ay the K-12 curriculum framework. Kasi nga, TTL ang subject ng mga estudyante ko, for example. Ayan, ganyan ang gagawin ninyo. So, module 1, pre-pace. Dear future educator, the knowledge and the skills in using educational technology are a fundamental requirement. So, ganyan ang inyong mga module. Ayan. So, in context of language education, all services, teachers are expected to will be able to utilize ICT, develop inquiry, and so on and so forth. So, ganyan yung gagawin. Module 1, study guides in house rules. Yeah. And then, continuation. So, kanina, meron tayong engage, explore, explain, at saka elaborate and evaluate. Sa bawat module, Ito yung schedule na pinapakita ko sa inyo ha. Schedule ng bata para aware sila. Ito yung study schedule ng bata. So, June 3 to 5, summer kasi ito. June 3 to 5, dapat na-accomplish na nila to. June, tapos unit 2, meron kang integration in language uh, plan learning modules. Uh, June 8 to 10, ito yung requirements. Tapos, June 14 to 16. Tapos, ayan, June 23 to 25. June 26, nandyan na siya. Ano available. Tapos nandiyan din kayo kailan ang final exam, kailan ang submission, and so on. <coughs> Tapos, submit through response module 3, 4, and 5. The answer of the following are embedded in the module. Ito, applicable to sa mga nasa bahay. Paano kung nasa bahay siya? Hindi naman siya makakapag-send ora mismo. Ang activity niya, dapat, uh, pag ipinasa niya, habang uh, ipapasa ko ngayon linggo, pagkuha ko ng panibagong module, Ipapasa ko yung first ano natin. So, nandang ano, ganun ang gagawin. Okay? Then, nandyan yung ano natin, registration, start of classes. At yung holiday, ilagay ninyo, pre-day, midterm exam, final examination. <coughs> Doon, evaluation, formative assessment uh, activities. Dapat, detail din yan. The pre-assessment, quizzes, and reflection questions are required. So, you can take it anytime with the scheduled days assigned for each unit. Quiz examination, assignment and final project, technological tools, feedback system, grading system. Ayan. Learning plans in the 21st. Okay? So, learning plans na to. At the end of the module, you should be able to. Ayan na. The basic education curriculum, the basic education curriculum, the country, andyan yung topic ninyo. Talagang detail na sa bata. <coughs> As learning outcomes. So, engage. Engage natin. Tapos, tingnan nyo ha, pansin ninyo. Kapag may mga activity, lalagyan nyo siya ng malaking space para inaano mo na pwedeng marami siyang isulat. Baka mamaya malangit na space na binigay natin kapag nasa bahay yon, a konti lang hinihingi ni ma'am, ni teacher. Ay kung malaki ang space, malami sila susulatan. Tapos, self-assessment tool, ayan, skill survey. Activity number three, ayan, explore. Ayan, tapos, explain. Ganyan kahirap gagawin yung ano, ganyan ka-challenges na gagawin yung learning plans. Okay, elaborate. Ayan. Tapos activity considering the role as curriculum designer. Ayan, nandyan yung mga activities niya. Uh, areas of analysis, then description. 
Then evaluate again. Okay, ganyan ka detail yung pinakita ko kanina. Ha? Yung schedule, di ba, mayroon yan. Tapos sa learning plans, gagawin nyo yan. Ito kapag offline, yung nasa bahay lang yung bata. Okay? Gagawin nyo ng mga activities and so on. Writing and play on. So, once you have decided on the content of the course, you have to put in the suitable order for teaching. Basic principles, and yan. Ayan, prime. Primacy of student autonomy, primacy of course in uh, completion. So sa activity, ayan po, <clears throat> week, topic, activity. So naka-detail dyan dapat. Ito yung sample activity namin sa Orange app namin. So makikita nyo, may collaborators. Yung collaborators kapag dalawang teacher. <clears throat> Kasi ang ginagawa namin dyan sa aming ano, <coughs> bali, Pinag-merge namin yung teacher. Halimbawa, purposive communication. Dalawang section, pag merge si namin, tapos dalawang teacher na mag-handle. So, collaborator yung isa. Yung isa, pwede siya ang taga-check nung galing sa ano, mag i ng mga nasa bahay lang. Yung isa sa LMS. Yung isa siya mag ano ng midterm, yung isa mag ano ng finals. So, bahala sila mag-usap. Basta collaborator sila. Di ba? Kapag nasa LMS, so nakikita nyo dyan, nakalagay ang date kung kailangan, bukod sa schedule kanina, mayroon pa akong date doon sa aking files kung kailan nila dapat basahin. May 28, May 28, May 21, May 21. Istat kasi tunuturo ko sa grad school, kaya makikita nyo ganyan. No? Yun. Then, course guide, course title. Yan. Ano pang sample? Kapag nagpa-take ng exam, ano, nakalagay dyan. You may take this exam anytime. 8 to 12, nakalagay. Upload your answer sheet on the submission bin for the final exam below within 150 minutes. So, dapat guided talaga siya. Then, ayan, sample. <coughs> Tapos, ang LMS, madidiscuss naman yun sa Diliosa, may mag-a-attempt ng, uh, may mag 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 pop 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 na message. Pwedeng ganun. Please read the following message. I understand that it's important that the attempt I am about. Ang Iwan ko lang sa LMS natin kung possible yon. Yung exam, pwede kong matake ng twice. Pero syempre, may limit ng oras. no? Sana pwede sa LMS. Sir Dilyosa, sorry. Sir, pwede. Sana mayroon. No? Sir, pwede. Ah, mayroon? Pwede. Okay, so. Okay, very good. Okay, so ganun dapat. Then, ayun, course assessment settings. Visible, organized, compassionate, analytical, and learner by example. So, I think that's it. And good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Pop. My God, nakakaubos ng ano. Yun na, ang mahalagang strategy na gagawin ninyo dapat, ano, uh, meron kayong mga video na ya, ano sa inyong LMS Lalo kapag ganito magdi-discuss kayo ni tuloy-tuloy, sobrang hirap. Kaya better kung meron kayong mga video. Yung style na ginawa ko kanina para hindi kayo mahihirapan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Paano po kung may mga katanungan po sila? May, may ano pa po kayo? May time pa po ba kayo? Yeah, pwede, pwede, pwede. Mayroon pa akong 15 minutes bago mag-start yung seminar kung talk sa NCR. Pero ano, magbibigay ako ng sample template kasi nga lahat ng teacher required gumawa, Sir Arman, kailangan gumawa ng learning plans at saka module. Wala kang, hindi ka makakapagturo ng 2020, 2021 na wala kang available nun. Kaso na ibibigay natin sa bata, anong ilalagay natin, ia-upload natin, natatawa si Ma'am Lali, sabi niya patay. Aano yun naman ako ni Doc Leto. <laughs> patay naman uh, sa mga sir. faculty. Oh. Doc Lelo, good afternoon. Oo. Oh, oh. Sir, Ako. since mag uh, since mag mag uh, train ka naman sa Bicol University, maglalambing kami, sir. Why not mag-train ka rin sa amin? Para okay. yung one week na training mo, ang magiging output ng teacher are the modules. Isang linggo 'yon. Would that be okay, sir? Pwede na siguro schedule lang kasi Yes, sir. Right kasi na... I think sir kailangan ko kasi ayun na magiging content sa yung uh, LMS eh. Kailangan naman ng LMS maayos, di ba? Kasi na magiging content ng LMS yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Pagkatapos And, po kasi... Uh, we need your expertise, sir, talaga. My God. Kasi pagkatapos ko na Region 5, Karaga Region, abali, 
limang regions na kasi ang naka-align sa akin ngayong bago magpasukan eh. So, itry ko kung saan ko pwedeng masingit ang Asia Tech. Uh, pero itong dinis ko sa inyo, basic pa lang yan, introduction pa lang yan. Kasi talagang gagawa tayo, nakita niyo yung mga sample ko kanina, na talagang gagawa ka ng learning class, bawat topic, may resources. Ngayon, alamin mo pa sa bata, mayroon ka bang ganito sa bahay, mayroon ka bang... Sobrang ano talaga, very challenging talaga ng ano na to, ng new normal na to. So, kung dati ang kinukulong ko sa inyo na dati ay syllabus lang at saka uh, ano yun mamlani, test construction, yung, yung mga exam ninyo. Ngayon, ang hihingin ko na sa inyo mga learning plans at modules na. Hindi naman yun entire year na agad, entire sem. Kung baga halimbawa, prelim, dapat ma-provide nyo bago mag-isat ang prelim. Habang ongoing ang prelim, ginagawa nyo ang pang midterm. Saka kaya ngayon, dapat talaga i-consider natin na magkaroon tayo si Ma'am She, no, yung library natin, talagang maghanap siya ng possible na mga yung mga deans, program heads, textbook na pwede nating ipalit sa mga na ano sa mga bata na talagang may activity, guided siya kayo mga din kayo mga head, mag-identify kayo. Kayo magpo-propose sa amin ni Ma'am She na pwedeng gamitin ng inyong mga estudyante, no? So maybe mag-meeting kayo ng inyong mga faculty ang mga heads saka mga dis magbibigay ng mga ng loading as early as possible para malaman na ng teacher yung i-approve kasi ang hirap maggawa hindi ganoon kadali isang pikit mo lang 3 hours tapos ka na hindi ganoon kadali ang eh paano kung may poor preparation ka good luck di ba sir Arman si sir Arman kung siya lang sa Comsai ang major ng Comsai apat halimbawa apat yung kanya module sabay-sabay for oh so hindi talaga ganoon kadali kaya Doc ang heads at saka Melo Meron na po ako na signature letter. Sasubmit ko na po bukas. <laughs> Narinig mo sabi ni si Ray dyan, hindi pwedeng CCT, copy-paste. Ano ba? CCP, copy-paste. Kasi makikita ng bata yun. Ay dapat naglagay ka na ng link na ito yung punta, pupuntahan. Hindi pwedeng ganun sa LMS. Di ba? So very sir, uh, challenging. Sir, sir, Doc Melos, siguro yung ano, yung yung plan is ano talagang original but then the resources we can use uh supplementary materials naman coming from the textbook meron naman yang mga available ayan po opo tama po sir provided na will reference siya will reference halimbawa katulad po ng ginawa ko ngayon nagtok ako ano so nagclassify po ako sa UP ang ginawa ko diyan lahat ng aking ginamit dito, chinat ko yung teacher ko, nagagamitin ko siya. Nagpaalam ako sa UPO, nag-email ako. Ganun po ang gagawin natin. Halimbawa, nagtok ako ngayon, na-record to, na po sa YouTube, gagamitin nyo. I-email nyo ako, nagagamitin nyo yon Para hindi kayo ma ma-paul. At sa ito, sasabihin ko sa inyo, totoo okay. naman to. Kapag for educational purposes, wala namang kaso agad doon. Walang kaso. Huwag nyo lang pagkakakitaan. Nakuha yung ibig ko sabihin. Halimbawa, halimbawa yung ibig ko available online. So yun, ang ibig na yun, na-download na ninyo. Ngayon, ipibenta nyo sa estudyante nyo. O, ipibenta nyo sa estudyante nyo ng TIG to 200. O, yun, bawal na yun. Dapat binigyan nyo na ako doon kasi ako author noon. Yung ganon. Uh, <laughs> Natawa si Sir ano, Arman. Di po ba, Sir Roel? Tama naman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pero, sir, it's still going back doon sa lambing namin sa'yo, sir. Sana nga pag ano ka ng one week sa amin, prior sa klase, kasi walang wala akong magagawa sa learning management system, kahit na ituro ko sa kanila yon yung teacher's account, saka student account, kung wala kaming ilalagay dun, sir. Which is yung very, very ano yung, ano yung uh, input nyo. Yun talaga kailangan ng mga teachers. Kasi to make things easier, kailangan talaga namin ng guide, sir. It's coming from the champion, which is kayo yun, sir. Nakasay ko na ni Doc Melo. Apat na linggo. Oo, 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 nakagad dyan. Apat na linggo, Doc Yes na yung kagad si Doc Melo. Si Regan, mayroon na tayong ano, bikol ha. Sinat na ako ng karaga. Malahimik ka dyan. Sunod-sunod yun. Okay. Yes, sir. Ano pa ano pwede question? naman sila schedule, kuwari, uh, ngayong araw na ito, phase one, phase two, di ba? Para... Ano, kumari, ano, magiging laman. Then afterwards, kung mayroong video content, so, <laughs> second phase, hanggang ma makatapos sila ng isang, ano, sample content ng isang module. Then afterwards, kayang-kayang kaya nila na i-triplicate or duplicate, di ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pwede yun, sir. Pwede yun. Maganda po yun, sir. 
Bale isang module mula sa study guide. Mula sa may syllabus na kasi eh, mula sa study guide hanggang dun sa module itself. Tapos, hanggang dun sa para sa ano talaga. Yes sir, para na sa uh, output ng phase 1, ang magiging output nun is resources, di ba? Yes sir. Magiging second phase kapag meron ng resources, ano ang gagawin ano gagawin natin sa mga resources sa to? So yun yung magiging learning guide mo hanggang makarating na, makakuha na tayo ng ng pinaka module output. Yes sir. Pwede yun sir. Pwede na i-schedule yun sir ng one week. Maganda yun sir. Para hinay-hinay sir. Kasi nabibigla ang faculty ko eh. Nabibigla ang faculty ko. Si Sir Arman nagsabi na ano? Magre-resign ka na po Sir Arman? Doc Melo, magre-resign ako kasi na kinuha na ako sa ibang banta. Sa Africa ako magduturo. <laughs> Hindi kasi ganun talaga kadali ang gagawin natin, promise. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, dapat umpisa. Mga siguro ano mag-meeting tayo ng mga heads sa Cadins, yung akad-akad ano, no para pag-usapan. Kailan po kayo available, no? Kailan po kayo available? Oh, Nahirapan ako mag-schedule eh, sa inyo. <laughs> kasi Sabado linggo may tao ako ng grad school, Saturday Sunday. So sige doc, mag-antay kami para mapag-usapan pa po namin yung ano. Pwede naman, kasi yung sa Bicol ko, tatlo kami. Pwede pa nagtutok na si Sir Regan ng kanyang topic 3 in 4, magwawan in to ako sa inyo, hindi ako mag-aasi sa kanya. <laughs> Wala mo ha. Ikaw ha. Sige, schedule ko lang. Ano yun lang namin schedule ni Sir Regan? Kasi marami pong mga katanungan po na ano, na gusto. Kagaya po nung isa, i-raise ko na lang din po kay Ma'am Grace daw po dahil HRM po siya, ano po yung gagawin niya kung, kung ganito daw po yung approach. Eh, may mga laboratory po siya. Ang ginagawa ngayon at present sa ganyan, itinuturo mo na yung pinakaano, yung mga procedures. Pero kung meron sila sa bahay, better. Uh, for the meantime, lahat muna ituro mo na yung mga steps, yung mga lecture part. Tapos kapag pwede na tayong mag, magkaroon ng face-to-face -face sa school, Yun, mag-alternate. Ang ano kasi ng TESDA, yung bago release na circular ng TESDA, uh, 12 students per laboratory. Sa CHED kasi, 2020 naman. Depende sa laki ng iyong laboratory. <clears throat> so, pwede sa school, pero wala pa ha. Hindi pa kasi GCQ pa. Pero mas na pwede na, 2020. So, kaya kailangan, ngayon pa lang, lahat ng pwedeng ituro mo na lecture, ituro mo na ngayon habang wala pa yung ganon. Para pang nag-laboratory, tuloy-tuloy na sila. So, yung first 20, Monday. Uh, second 20, Tuesday. So, MWF, yung isa titi. So, ganun lang. Para pagdating ng ano, alam na lahat ng bata, hindi na mag-discuss pa, masasayang yung time. Talagang actual na agad pag sa ano na. Ganun ang gagawin sa mga laboratory. Sa IT naman, at saka sa mga engineering, kung mayroon mga authoring software available online, na pwedeng gamitin ng bata, yung lab, pwede na. Ngayon, kung wala talaga computer ang bata, yun, ganun din ang gagawin. Lahat mo na ituro yung mga lectures, tapos ang applications, kapag pwede na pumunta ang bata sa school. Ngayon, halimbawa, ang teacher, wala. Paano ang teacher talaga ang wala? Katulad ngayon. Yung iba, sabi, ay, wala talaga kami. So, ang Asia Tech, may computer laboratory, tama po ba? Meron po. So, for the meantime, mag one spacing kayo, yung teacher na wala talaga computer sa bahay at walang internet, Doon kayo mag-ano sa school ng klase ninyo. Ma'am Shirk, uh, uh, with regards to HRMs, in other school, uh, dinifer nila yung laboratory ngayon. Hindi, nila, hindi sila nagpa-enroll ng laboratory ngayon. Kaya lang, there will be changes or impact on the curriculum. Pero other schools naman, uh, ginawa nila, they offer the laboratory courses ngayon. Pero lahat, puro demonstration through video. Then afterwards, yung grade nila sa laboratory, deferred until such time na maka, yung mga bata makapag-actual laboratory. So, pwede naman yun. Kasi ang, ang magiging loopholes lang or lapses or uh, disadvantage na babaguhin ng curriculum, you need also seek the approval of the commission unless autonomous ka. Pangalawa, kung ang laboratory ay papasok mo kuwari sa next year level, baka naman yung tuition fee ng bata biglang times two because of pure laboratories. Kasi tatanggal mo ng laboratory ngayon, yung mga laboratory courses, i-offer mo by next year for sure, yung mismo laboratory fees or laboratory charges, tatas din. So, pwede yun mam i-offer nyo ngayong laboratory para lang magkaroon ng intervention sa laboratory, pure lecture, then afterwards, demonstration. Kaya nga may cause tayo na may mga video tutorial tayo. So, yung teacher mag-actual ng cooking, di ba? 
So, kaya nga, ma mag mahalaga talaga din sa learning management system natin or sa Center for e-learning natin na meron talaga tayong technical person na mag-video mag mag sa atin, mag edit ng video, then yung i-upload nun para sa mga, mga ano, kasi for sure, ma'am, cooking. Hindi naman pwede yung cooking na, na six hours ay naka-video. For sure, ikakat at ikakat yan. Diba? Para lang yung bata, madali, niya, madali din niya matutunan. Kung meron naman silang ingredients sa bahay na makukuha, Therefore, the students can also demonstrate it. Get upload niya. So that, yun yung ano, yun yung mga ganun techniques lang po eh, na pwede natin gamitin so far. Kung merong equipment, merong ingredients yung bata sa bahay at meron siyang uh, facility, so ibig sabihin, makakasunod at makakasunod din siya. So ganun po yun yung ginagawa ng ibang school dito sa Manila. Okay po. Siguro narinig niyo po, Ma'am Grace, yung sinasabi. Uh, uh, sir, 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 Ray Jan. Sir Rayjan, okay naman po sir yung LMS na gagamitin natin kasi unlimited naman yung yung ano yung file size na pwede i-post doon. Kaya maka-accommodate niya yung video. Ayun pa, maganda po 'yon. Kaya lang po talaga ang kailangan syempre ang mga teachers din naman natin, hindi naman sila ang mag-aano ng authoring to ano software. Much better there will be somebody to assist them na Uh, habang nagluluto si ma'am, mayroong magbibideo, mag then afterwards mag-e-edit, diba? mag-talagay ng mga caption so that the students can also easily understand during the viewing of the video presentation. Okay, sir. Noted, sir. Noted. Thank you po. Okay. Same with programming. Pwede rin yun sa programming. Pero ang, ang programming naman, ang advantage, pwede ganito, i-share mo lang yung screen mo, itinidemo mo na yung program kung paano ginagawa. So pwede na sa programming yon. Alek do sa nagluluto nga, hindi ganun kadali. Sa nagko-compute, for example, kung accounting yon, tapos Excel ang ginagamit, pwede rin naman ganun. Uh, tama yung sinasabi ni Sir Rejan, dapat may nagbibideo sa'yo. Ano ba, nagdi-discuss ka ng competition ng accounting, so pwede mo yung pabideo, tapos i-upload. Pwede naman ganun. So, maraming paraan na pwedeng gawin. Yes po. Another question po. Anong pa po? Ayan, siguro po ay um, medyo na-shock po doon sa madami po ninyong sinasabi do. Kahit nga ako parang sumabog yung <laughs> utak ko, ganun yung preparation natin. Pero wala tayong magawa kung dito embrace the new normal. Siguro mamaya po makapag-create po sila ng ano ng mga questions sa sarili nila ngayon. Um, pag nag-send po sila sa amin ng mga questions, siguro po mag-set po tayo ng meeting with ACAD. Siguro doon natin i, i ano po, erase po doon tapos sasagutin po namin sila. So siguro dahil lampas na lang alas ah mag-alauna na po pala, Dok. Ay talagang uh, maglalambing kami sa inyo ng ano schedule ng training do kasi ikaw po yung champion dito. <laughs> Kailangan po namin kayo do kaya uh, maisingit po sana ninyo kami ng ng training kahit one week. Apat na linggo. <laughs> <laughs> hindi baka may makikita ka diyan na ano, ano lalo uh, hindi ko naman inaano pero lalo yung mga nasa education. Marami namang actually marami masisisi yung mga nasa education natin diyan na teacher eh. Lalo yung mga will experience. Kaya nila yan na magano eh. Tingnan ni Miss Lim sa mga educator diyan. Kasi kami hindi naman kami educator, parang ang ano namin pa how to embrace technology lang talaga. Tapos inaral lang namin yung mga education part. Eh pero doktor ako na education actually. Pero si Ma'am Lim, yung mga faculty niya diyan lalo yung mga season, no? Season educator, makakatulong yung mga yan. Uh, pwede sila mag-assess, pwede mag Asis uh, sa pag ano sa seminar. Magaling yung mga yan kasi sa licensure exam ng EDUC yan yung mga dinidiskus eh. Yan yung mga kailangan. Yung pero yung detail, yung technology application, yun siguro yung part namin. Tingnan ni Miss Lim kung sino pwedeng makapag-share para mabawasan yung one week na pwede namin ano. Para may mag-aassist ba habang wala kami. Uh, diba? Pwede bang uh, arali, pwede bang pahingin yung ano niyo doc yung presentation para po medyo madahan-dahan na po namin ng I-send ko muna yung sample learning outcome sa ay yung ginawa naming output para makita niyo paano ginagawa. Tapos yung sa module, nakaano kasi yung module eh, hindi pwedeng i-share naka ano tawag doon. Kasi uh, yung ano na lang po doc yung output siguro yung nagawa niyo sample. 
Gawa tayo na sa atin para nakaano rin sa atin, hindi pwedeng ibigay sa iba. Ano po? Kasi tomorrow, si ano, Sir Deliosa ay mag-start na rin po sa LMS. So the other, the next day, mag-i-input na po yata ng mga yung gagamitin na module, magtatry na po kung paano siya gagamitin. Ayan. Okay. Maganda, maganda. Kaya, thank you for today, Doc. And sa mga kasamahan natin, yung kapatid natin dyan, na hindi ko nakikita dahil hindi ko alam ba yung limited lang yung nakikita ko eh. Si Ronel, paano ba mag ano, screenshot na nakita tayong lahat? Si Ronel, gawin mo naman. Hindi, kailangan lahat mag ano ng audio, ayun ang video. Oo, so, mag-video muna... tayo, remembrance natin. Ikaw din, ma'am, di ka rin nakikita. Ay, oo nga pala. Ano ba yan? Teka. Ayun mo na lahat ng video pa. Mag-picture lang si Sir, ano, si Sir Marketing. Dalawang ano tayo, ang dami, nakakatuwa. Kasama senior high? Opo, nandito po yung mga senior high at saka ano, junior high. Pwerte yung mga yan, available na sa DepEd. Sa website yung mga course plan nila, available na sa DepEd. Oo, oh, walang problema. Sa... Walang problema oh, yung junior yung high. Oo, oh. oh, oh, tama. Open natin yung mga cameras po natin. And <coughs> dalawang shots po tayo kasi dalawang page po tayo. Ng dito sa aking screen. Hindi ko lang po yung iba. Ayan, nagbubukas pa po ng video yung iba. Sa desktop at laptop, may nakikita lahat, no? Yeah, uh, Opo, oh sir. Hindi po, dalawang dalawang page dalawang din po sa... Dalawang ba tayo lahat? Screen. 43. Dalawang screen? Dalawang screen? Dalawang screen? Dalawang screen? 43? Dalawang screen? 43. Wala sila, Ma'am Darl. Si Ma'am Aileen. Ma'am Darl, Ma'am Aileen. Wala pa rin sila, pero may picture. Sige po, tingin lang po tayo sa camera and smile. Yung iba dyan nag-lunch na alam ko, pero tingin na sa... I want... 2, 3... I want to go to sa kapila. Time to connect. I want to... Ilang daw? Ngayon na po. Nakita po. Hindi po. Wala na sa Sunderly. Ayan po. Dok, maraming pong salamat sa time niyo, Dok. May speech pa po kayo sa UP po ba? Magpapadala na lang po kami ng digital certificate. O, di ba? Dok, may daw. So, thank you so much. Uh, Sir Deliosa, may announcement po ba kayo para bukas? Sir Deliosa? Uh, tomorrow po, tomorrow. Good okay. afternoon. Tomorrow po, dapat uh, kompleto po tayo. Then, yung Zoom po, uh, i-connect nyo po sa cellphone nyo kasi ano tayo eh, hands-on po eh. So, yung Zoom nyo, naka, yung Zoom nyo sa cellphone po na-connect and then meron kayong standby na laptop para habang dinademonstrate natin, ginagawa na natin yung yung activity. Kasi yung first kasi natin na activities, magkikreate tayo ng teacher's account, which is kayo. Tapos yung the following day po, may, may, may activities doon, how to ins-add, mga yung kaninang diniscuss ni Doc Melo. And then the second uh, second uh, phase natin ng training is student naman. No? So mag a naman kaya student, magkikreate tayo ng student account. Para sa third day, uh, sasagutan natin yung... Uh, sa activity natin, another activity natin, sasagutan natin yung uh, yung activity na pinost ng teacher para at least ma-appreciate nyo kung ano yung view nung student dun sa ginawa nyo. And then sa third day, pupapresent natin yung uh, output natin isa-isa. So at the end of the training, meron na kayong uh, uh, account dun sa LMS na gagamitin natin. Tapos you are also capable to teach your student on how to create student account. Yun po yung target natin. So, dun sa ano natin, sa mga modules natin, uh, nandun-dun naman yung provisions na pwede kayong mag-insert ng uh, document, pwede kayong maglagay ng assessment. So, ituturo rin po yun. Ituturo rin po yun lahat. Ang hindi ko lang may tuturo sa inyo is yung part nung sa parents kasi 
yung sa parents kasi medyo ano yun eh. Uh, pag uh, sa college kasi medyo ano na yung sa parents, di ba? Pero kung meron tayong, meron pa tayong oras, we can also teach you on how to uh, create accounts no as, is, as parent naman ng student. Para yung parent, makakamonitor din kung ano yung uh, activity na ginagawa ng student. Yun lang po. Thank you. Pero Sir Roel, uh, maganda rin mayroong makaroon ma ng video on how to create accounts for teachers, students, and even ang parents. Then post it to your website so that the students can easily access and, and know how to, how to create accounts by their own. Uh, yes sir, noted sir. Actually, uh, meron na po kaming plan. Uh, meron namang mga YouTube po na galing mismo dun sa LMS. But then, additionally, meron po akong kinrate na module. Meron po akong kinrate na module, step-by-step -step module on how to create teacher and student account which is uh, to be distributed naman sa mga uh, faculty members namin. Ayan. So, maraming salamat, Doc Deliosa. Dr. Melo and Sir 